<laughs> Stream yard. The red wine. Over there? You see everybody over there? Yeah. Yeah, I can see everybody. Um, well, can you, you want to come on that side? The side down. Yeah, slide the bench down. Because you'll still be in this thing. Yeah, check the um, tablet. Oh, yeah, this tablet good. So we straight, straight right here on the table. You don't have to see when you sit down over there. So last time you was leaning back, you was leaning up. I know I got to <laughs> lean. Oh yeah, I think we all. I think yeah, we as long as if I'm in this one, then you can lean. Don't have to lean back. Don't have to lean back. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, let's slide the bar. Yeah, let's slide the bench. We can slide the bench down just a little bit, and then I can come in the corner. Yeah, Hey y'all! How y'all doing? How y'all doing? What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to another episode of Shelby's Worlds. Yes, yes, yes. It is November fourth today. <laughs> <laughs> Every Wednesday, she she paused to tell you the date. Every Wednesday, I gotta make sure I'm on the right day. Okay, it's November fourth. We are in a new month. Right. Welcome to November. Welcome yes, to another yes, month of yes, fall. Yes, Y'all ready yes, today? Yeah, yes. you're not ready for the cold. Well, I'm ready for the cold. Yeah. No, I'm not. I hate not it. freezing, but you know, it's good I cold. Like it's good weather. Cold. It's it's cold. Cold. It's cold. 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 I work my way. I'll be low. <laughs> <laughs> my employer not to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, how we doing, Rob? We're doing great. We're doing great. Okay. Um, well, we're going to go around the room and give another wonderful introduction of who we are. If you tuned in last week, you know who we are, but we still want to have the panel introduce themselves. We're not going to do a whole walkthrough. We comfortable this week, so we're just going to jump right into it. Joe, what's going on, Joe? Joseph Ward, podcaster, educator, entrepreneur, and his red wine blessing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you already know me. I'm Candace, Queen Candace, a co-host of Shelby's World Podcast, owner of JP Couture. You know, I do a lot. I do it all. I do it all. I do it all. So welcome back to Shelby's World. Sharika Collins, wife, mother, social worker, paralegal. Um, it's nice to, you know, see all of you good people. We in the middle of this crazy election, so. Yeah, look, everybody. Sip on this Tito's and take the edge off. Right. And y'all know me, Shelby, 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 podcaster. What's up, Rob? Rob Repairman, um, dad, husband. I'm ready to get the show started. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> So um, today we are going to go ahead and jump into like the meat and the potatoes of the show. Last time we were kind of warming up, warming getting up. used to everybody, kind of learning yes. who we're dealing with, learning our crowd, learning you guys, what y'all like, what y'all don't like. And based on our last show, we got a good okay. amount of feedback, feedback yeah. um, positive feedback. And we want to just keep it going and continue the conversation so that we can understand relationships a little bit. So we're going to jump right into it. Welcome back. Pound but yes, welcome, welcome back. back. The panel, welcome thank back. Thank y'all for coming fun. back. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Enjoyed each other. It, it was. was. It, it was, was, was really good. good. And before we even, we're going to jump into it. We are going to jump right into it because I do keep saying we're going to jump into it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know by now. <laughs> yeah. You know, how, you know how we roll over here <laughs> at Shelby's World. But what I want to do is just have a quick recap. Um, Joe came on as our expert single person last time. Um, Ms. Collins came on as our expert married woman and mr perriman came on as our expert married man and before both of them were married they were both single so they are also giving a perspective on that but they're also mostly here to talk about their perspectives um in the married role 
um, versus okay. the singles old. Um, so we're going to definitely get a get into a good gist of the single life before married life today, just because we want to kind of hear how people dealt with um, who you were before. You're trying to get us. No, no, no. Out. It's all about your single. single. When you were before, with your before. husband. Before you married your husband. Oh, okay, because we yeah. gotta make sure we don't get No, 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 no. You're gonna live. Okay. It's all my good. birthday coming up. No, you gonna live. I need to get up. Oh, it's, all, it's all we can say, yeah. hold up, we, hold we up. I got my hands on the bed tonight. We talking about I know how to be an advocate for my for my marriage. I understand. Right. You know, right. co-host right. here. You know, because we're just trying to make sure that Keith's word. He got to go home and fight Shannon. I got to go home and fight Jason. And we ain't trying to have We just say, what do the lonely do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we just we just want to be. I thought it's part I, three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 part three. <laughs> Married and homeless. Married. <laughs> we definitely gonna make sure that this does not yeah. expound beyond your partners. When I say single life, I mean before you, you guys were dating, partner. before yeah. you guys got married, before you all decided that um, you were gonna be Miss Collins and you were gonna bake her Miss Pyramid. That's what we're talking about, but not no, not no, not no, not, 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 not that single. Yeah. Yeah. Not the, the social worker in me saw Rob eyebrow raise. He raised a little bit. Yes, I felt like Wait, I had to, I had to no, throw my no, dog a no. life jacket. Yeah. Like, where, where we going with this, no, Rob? Right, we right, definitely, right. I'm definitely. Cause you know, I feel about it. I'm look, I'm, I'm right there with you. It was no shade. We about to be nice. I'm about to ask somebody if I can bring my spend the night back. So open that back. <laughs> we got, and this is and y'all. This is the panel got real good last week. Like you guys would have thought that everybody had real life uh, friendships before. Yeah. I know you guys know each other, but real life friendships before the um, actual panel. So it worked out really good. It's like we I chose we chose a good yeah. you know yeah. select few, and we want to make sure because of that we can get. Continue to have wonderful yeah, we'll, we'll, um, yeah, dialect. Oh, yeah. Y'all spouses <laughs> we, looking at us in the street. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah. We don't need any of that. Y'all had a that show talking about that. that single. Like, no, nah, we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. Nah. So, um, let me just based on last week, Joe, tell us something that you gathered from last week. I mean, last two weeks ago when we actually had the last um, discussion. What was one of the key things that stood out for you? Um, for one, it reinforced that marriage, uh, good marriages do exist, healthy relationships do exist. People are finding people that they are compatible with and can be with. Because, you know, in your single life, it looks like everybody crazy. It really <laughs> do. So, but it, that's one of the things also, like, how important real communication is. Not mm -hmm. like just talking at people, but talking to someone and listening to hear before you respond. So. Right. Okay. What about you, Miss Collins? I'm gonna call you that off and on today. It's gonna either be Sharika or Miss Collins, okay. depending on how much. <laughs> um, I think my takeaway was learning to pick my battles. I want to say it was my buddy Rob that said something about, "Are you listening to respond or to understand. or to understand?" And that was <laughs> thanks to you. We had part two already at home. Uh, he was like, that's you. That's you. Okay, wait a minute. Okay. But so that means he watched the show. He did. Thank Shout you. Out. Shout, Shout out. out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Mr. Collins. He Mr. Collins, salute. So it was like, okay, that was my takeaway. Like, I need to, you know, when we're having conversations, I don't like to use the word arguments, because um, mm -hmm. that already puts everybody on the right. defense. Mm -hmm. But listen to understand and not be waiting on how I'm going to respond. Right. Okay. Wow. I like that. I like that. And now, you know, it's good to hear a woman say that she took that away because men tend, let me explain something to y'all. Men tend to think that women are always trying to be right, mm -hmm. always trying to be um, the person that is the bigger person in the situation. Yes. And most times it's either because we feel like we're not being heard, for one, because y'all put us in the zone of this is what uh, she doing what women do. And then that tends to make us feel like we're being belittled, what we feel is being belittled, um, or not big enough. Mm -hmm. So that's a big that's a big deal that she walked away with that mm -hmm. and was able to have her husband go to her husband and be like, No, I'm right, you're right, you're right. All right. right. Okay. <laughs> almost. I was uh, yeah. Almost. Yeah. We almost there. Yeah, we we 
we all know. We agree to yeah. disagree. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what you took away? Um, I guess I would just have to say that overall it was a great ballot between those all. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good conversation. And um, later on in the week, or the week after that, I posted one of the um, comments that Joe said. And he said, are you trying to have a good relationship or are you trying to win? And that jumped out because I felt like a lot of people get in relationships and they compete. They don't, uh, or, and they don't know they're competing, but they are yeah. doing that a lot. You, you going, um, instead of where I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And it's not like Rob said, you're not being heard mm-hmm. because you're constantly trying to battle the situation versus trying to have an understanding for the situation. And then you ain't hearing the other person. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not hearing them at all. Right. Correct. They're just busy thinking about what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. Right. That's it. That's all. That's but all. But you're still stuck on, on what they said. Point one, yeah. And he done said two, three, four other things about yeah, all you yeah, heard was that one thing. thing. Yeah. And you've been sitting there trying to think about what your company what's up? Yep. Yeah. Not respond. Come back. Come, come back. back. <laughs> that's and that's a fight. Right. But let me right. check you. It is. That's what you're thinking about. Let me check you. And that and being combative, um, in most situations is a lot of the problem. You get you you actually have more problems created uh-huh. with that situation versus any fixes because it's too many well, it seemed like that has been like romanticized like by society and oh, like Hollywood and stuff. Yeah. it's like, it's like the bad romanticized. relationships mm-hmm. are the best relationships nah. and it's like because uh, you know you even had like Mary J. Blige and her mid 40s make a song uh yeah, good yeah. guys are boring yeah, bad guys are fun Mr. It's, like, Wrong. it's like you know I mean you still nah. saying about that <laughs> but it just and I understand like where that comes from though now I do like when I was younger I just thought like some people just crazy but now I see like people really come up in these environments and they come mm-hmm. up in these situations where we're gonna argue all day uh, what Pimp C say she, uh, she say she love me but all we do now is fucking fight like, mm-hmm. that's that's like the regular so I get it now but I I'm, I'm hoping that like when we get more control of this media thing and information that we put out, we can be able to change that. The narrative, yeah. Yeah. And that's the point of having your own broadcast and own stations and networks right. and, and radio stations so because you can control, you control right. the narrative. You control right. the, so content, the content. You control the you conversation. Control yeah, so if we, and that, if we gotta get more into understanding the things that we do control because if we allow things like this to continue happening, the toxicity to be what's getting glamorized mm-hmm. in relationships right. that we're going to continue to have negative relationships where you're jumping from one relationship to the next. And it's right. the same. You know right. what I'm saying? Or staying in bad ones. Or staying in bad ones. Yeah. For it's years. <laughs> you know, people, that's, that's not good. And then they abuse, abusive, and, and you go going thinking that this is the normal thing. This mm-hmm. is a normal situation. And it's not. So... We talked about toxic relationships last um, time we had our sit down, but today I want to talk about the toxic people in relationships. Um, <laughs> why in breakups are the things that the women did that are toxic in the relationship? Why is that overlooked and overshadowed because the man did? He cheated. We forget about the reasons because sometimes we we love to say that we don't force a person out. Yes, you do. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you do. It ain't always like people will stay around and try to fight for the relationship as long as they can. But if you keep doing some of the same things, you're eventually going to make that person leave. So sometimes you do force a person to do things do. Um, that they don't want to do. Now, eh, cheating, you know, it depends on... Uh, I don't know. I don't, so, so I don't believe in it. So, but I know people gonna run, people lean on cheating as they re, um and, refuge. And that's that that make it worse because what for for one yeah. we talk about a lack of accountability on the part of like you saying the, the woman in the relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, you were doing some shit that wasn't cool, that wasn't good for this relationship. But at the same time though. As a dude, if I go out and cheat, 
I just messed up too. Like what I did ain't right. What I really, what I did ain't justified. Now we got all this going on, but this is the best idea I can come up with because mm -hmm. that's going to make it worse if I do that, especially if I get caught. And different people make different decisions. I don't be trying to get caught up in right or wrong, good or bad in people's relationships, but just understand if you do this, will this help your relationship get better? And if it don't help it get better, don't do that shit. Right. That's true. So in accountability, taking the accountability away from um, the male in this particular situation, and he don't step out, what are we doing to help the relationship? And if we stand, if a woman is continuing her toxicness, because we don't ever really, a man never really complains when he in that relationship to other people about his woman being toxic. They don't have a refuge. You know what I'm saying? They don't have nobody to run to about that because then you looked upon as being weak or you complaining about a good woman and all she, she do, she just got this right here going on, but she got all these all wonderful these things. things but nigga, she tearing me down every day. But I'm supposed to keep dealing with that. So what are we going to do about the toxic person before anything becomes where he trying to have some get mad? Well, sometimes I don't think the toxic person, like we said before, really know that they that toxic. They're toxic. So first you got to get them to the point of even coming to the realization of what they're doing is toxic, whether it be verbal abuse or just disrespect, whatever it is, you know. They got to come to the realization that they could have been raised like that. They could have yeah. just been around it or, you know. Yeah, because you can't hold me accountable for something I don't know. That's a problem. You know, hurt. Hurt people hurt I could, people. I could be offending you, and I don't know I'm offending you. don't even you, know it. But you may tell Joseph, but that's not helping. Right. Because yeah. Joseph can't change my behavior. Right. We yeah. ought to be able to have a conversation oh. and say, hey, you know, when we were doing the podcast last week, you said something that didn't sit well with me. I don't know it don't sit well with you Until if you, you told say, Joseph, right. you know. Mm -hmm. So I think, like Rob said, we first got to have a conversation about it. Like, he got to tell his spouse or girlfriend or whatever, like, yeah. hey, you know, what you said or what you did didn't sit well with me, and they have a conversation about it. Now, if you continue to do something that you know that makes somebody uncomfortable, then that's a problem in itself. Mm -hmm. Now you have the accountability. So now we get to explain in a moment or a time that you guys overcame a toxic situation in a relationship, in your relationship, currently in your marriage, or in your singleness before you got married <laughs> to the person who you married to. <laughs> <laughs> help me, help me. Break it down. Break it down, <laughs> Break it down <laughs> to a point. Break it down to a point. two errors outside to be homeless. Right. Yeah. Joey, you got you got if you got moments in your singlehood where you probably experienced it too. So think about that too. I moved, I moved on. It was a it was a long time dealing with my kids' dad because we was high school sweethearts, and it just got to a point that we fussed and fought each other probably for eight months straight, and it just got to the point that I was like, man, look, I won myself. My mom was like, you ain't yourself. And I just said, yeah, one day I just woke up and, you know, like, it's time to, it's time to move on. Like, this, this here, I'm acting all out my character in front of people, our friends, you know, our friends, just everything, to the point that I should have been arrested. And the officer pulled me over and said to me, because I showed out at his job and actually said to me, my kids was in the back seat, and he was just like, young lady, white guy, he was like, you same age I am. He said, you too young to be going through this. He was like, you got a lot going on for yourself. I don't, You don't have no record, no nothing. This is going to make you have a record. You got to wake up and just lead and just, just go on about your business. And it was some weeks later, but that always resonated with me. And I, I just was like, I'm done. Like, I'm, I'm done. Because when I'm acting out my character... But it was, it was a lot, but I could tell eight months straight, 
It took somebody else that you ain't know didn't to know tell you at and out of character though. Didn't know, didn't look, could have took me to jail because yeah. the confident that he worked for, they the one called the police. Oh, you were and We was out there. Look, and we was oh, in Walcola County at oh, that yeah. time. Oh, the shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So it was just, it took that and just was, and looking at my kids, because my son was just two years old at the time and be able to have, actually had to witness that. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, you know what? Nah, like, I got a daughter, I got a son, they at this age. I can't let them see this. I know what I didn't been through as a child with my mom and her situation that had happened and stuff, and she had to get up and leave as well. So it was just like, you know what? Nah, this ain't this ain't me. Like th this just ain't me. And I just left it. And the best decision that I made. I know it's the best decision that I made because it ain't no telling. I could I probably could actually say this. I probably wouldn't have what I have now. Now. Mm -hmm. right. Always was an entrepreneur, but probably wouldn't really be where I'm at now. And my kids probably wouldn't be the kids that they are too if I would have stayed. Correct. And stuff. So you, you, hey, sometimes they have to take that stranger to wake you up to realize that man, look, I got this. This is toxic. Like you ain't looking like yourself. This ain't your, this ain't your character. This, just, this, this is just not the person. And acting all out. And then one of our friends that we had a mutual friend, one of our homeboys, he even said, he was like, sis, you got to go. Like, that's my dog. You my dog too, but sis, you got, hey, he gonna keep doing what he doing. It's time for you to leave. Like, we got you. And I honestly say they did. They like really looked after me and my kids after I left, left them, even though that was their friend as well, but they really like, really looked out for us and stuff. So, hey, you just, you got to, it's all on you, but it's what you want. But I'm happy I did it. But know. you, it took you saying it took a lot of time to do that, and, and imagine going like, back and forth for two people, years. Right, right, because like a lot of times they don't know they in. Mm -hmm. We've explained in the toxic relationship. They don't know in the top that became a nor a normal thing for you mm -hmm. to be experienced and all this stuff y'all going through. That was a normal thing to the point where you even, you took the kids with you to do it. Yeah, yeah. That, I, that's dropping it, him off to work. That's when it's but a, it happened. That, it happened that morning where I went to pick him up from work, and when I went back to drop him off from work, that's they had the people out there had the sheriff there waiting. So it was like, what? Well, like, yeah, I should have had a record a long time ago. Thank God I don't. But that could have I could have ended up getting in trouble because that you know the company they could have pressed charges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want to call the police. They want you out of so that's color. that's and we keep it. Yeah. <laughs> and color, baby. And wall color. Yeah. We um and wall color. <laughs> that okay. that's that's a really good example of um getting to your breaking point with it. Mm -hmm. But we um have times where we've seen people not even make it to the that's breaking true. point. People have experienced the violence yeah. to the point where somebody's died, um, placed in jail, mm -hmm. um, taken from the children. For a long period of time, they'll see their family. So things, in order to avoid, what are knowing the signs of toxicity? That's a tricky question. Because you got to be educated on the signs. And so, like, uh, there's a story of, it was a lady called, the, they call her the woman without a face. Um, I can't remember her name. Her name just escaped me. But they call her the woman without a face. And basically, her dude shot her in the head with a uh, with one of the three fifty seven Magnum handguns. Mm. That's like a quarter size hole in the head. Shot her mom in the stomach, killed her mom. But one thing she said was she didn't really notice the sign. She didn't know that this was bad. And it took her going through that situation, getting shot in the face, and going through rehab, and then getting counseling to really realize like the red flag because sometimes we see like they just zoom straight through the red flags because mm -hmm. they not they don't really know that this isn't good because it, it could be so normalized in their life they're like well everybody i know get down like this mm -hmm. it's 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 regular it's just like you know if all of us poor we don't know that being poor yeah you you making it but you would rather not be poor so right. it's just like that's why i say that's a tricky question because like me now after working in uh, 
sexual violence and domestic violence prevention for 10 years. I even know the signs now because before it started, I didn't know none of these signs. Now I know the signs listening to people, but before then, it's just like, but damn, how many toxic relationships was I in? So that's, you know, it's, I, I think that's why we need a lot more education on that. So, that's true. so there aren't really many signs. It's no, it's a lot of signs. signs. I'm talking about to know when it's like, okay, so if there are a lot of signs, what are some signs that a person can see from jump? Because personality signs or personality traits could be signs. How you respond to um, situations are signs. How do you, so like, how do you, when people see these signs and instead of just saying, you know what, this is a good person. Because we do that a lot now. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly yeah. women that will put things to the side mm -hmm. about people just to continue to he'll stop he won't do this no more right or oh, i can change, oh, him. I can change him yeah. and i'm not talking about just violence i'm talking about this manipulation yeah. behavioral behavior, things yes, like everything it's a lot of different things that women will subject themselves to because they feel like this is a good guy i want him in my life blah 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 but they see signs that's the same thing for men. Yeah, too. I'm just saying. Men, men, men too. Men too. Definitely yeah. men too. Yeah, because it's all women. They'll show you a certain type of women and be different. From the beginning, it's, it's, it's toxic with the one with the female already like um kind of not knowing herself and yeah. really uh going with something that you know you kind of know and fear from the beginning, like something ain't right, mm -hmm. but you put in excuses for it or whatever. I feel like, you know, uh, a woman like that has some bit of tox toxic in them already because she don't really know herself. So she don't really know herself and her worth. Something has happened along the line or something mm -hmm. ha hasn't happened right. over the course of being a kid to now that has brought her awareness to, you know, a woman got standards. Right. That's true. Right. Yeah. Some know they stand the some. Mm -hmm. Self esteem. Self esteem is a lot. One making excuses, you know, eventually if these excuses that you're making this really the person, it's gonna come out on his end, mm -hmm. and then your toxic side gonna come out. Mm -hmm. And then you know, so at the beginning of relationships, you know, you you have that honeymoon stage. Yeah. Everything, everything is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. you all like every, but baby. Yeah. I just seen some people, they be in that honeymoon stage, and here we go, we'll say it's a year down the... They got, they got what they call the cycle of violence. Like, wow, like... The cycle of violence. So it's like, like she's talking about the honeymoon stage, everything mm -hmm. is good, and then you have, like, the the aggressive stage where they are they are attacking you, then you have to, like, that stage in the middle where it's kind of setting it up to get to that aggressive stage or, or setting it up to get to that that honeymoon stage, but it's just it's something that keep going. So you you talking about somebody being in a relationship that's bad for two years because they stuck in this cycle, mm. and then until they actually either get tired of it or recognize it, they gonna keep going and keep going. Like one thing we learned in social work um, was that violence doesn't have to be a repeated thing. Mm -hmm. um, they give they gave us this you know this scenario of this married couple. They had family coming in for Thanksgiving. The husband came home, had a bad day. The wife didn't cook something. I forgot to cook something. I didn't cook something right. I forget it. It's been so long ago. But anyways, before all of the family came, like, you know, he jumped on her. Like, mm -hmm. beat her really badly. She had to get herself together, you know, put on a smile before everybody got there. But what she shared was that he never touched her again. He never put his hands on her. He didn't have to because he always told her, Remember Thanksgiving. Mm. Uh, and so okay. she would always be walking around oh, on eggs egg because I don't have to tell you what I'm going to do because you already know. Right. Mm. You know, not already experienced it. So, so it was just wow. that whole remember Thanksgiving thing that I remember them telling us like That's deep. my junior year at FSU, like, and that control over her. Like, yeah. I only have to do this to you one time. And if I do it right, I don't have to do it anymore. So mm. it was always remember Thanksgiving. 
Yeah. And that's real deep, too. I probably would have hated Thanksgiving. Right. I would never want right. to celebrate it again. Right. Remember Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then for him to say, remember Thanksgiving. So every time, every, every, every time, time psychological. Yeah, yeah. 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 They call it psychological abuse. He don't, he, yeah. she said that was the only time that her husband had ever jumped on her. Mm. So from every story, time. The way that this, the stuff was told. Uh, yeah, from the professor. So every just time, he, that she time. did something. He just, all he had to do was say everything. You remember Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. And you like a little child. Like mm -hmm. a kid. You yes. just freeze up. Wow. And that's that's a situation. That's a scary situation. That is. Um, um, and uh, that I, I, <laughs> I laugh at this now, but it's not funny at all. Because I always used to laugh when a man used to say he was getting, I never believed men got abused. That's why I laugh. Yeah, it's not funny. But um, this guy. He was telling a story at work, and he was just like, he laughed, he, he giggling about it, but you could tell he was ashamed. Yeah. Because, like, the That's look, for laughing. one, the look on my face was like, like, because for one, this is the first time I'm hearing that a man is getting abused. Getting abused. And so mm -hmm. he, he going, into, but he not making it like he's getting abused, but that's exactly, exactly what going about on. Yeah. And he like, um, if I don't take out the trash fast enough, um, I'm getting shoes thrown at my face. And if I don't, like, it got to the point where it was a sexual thing. If I don't make her come a certain amount of times, is is you know, she beat me up, she punched me in my face. And I'm having to explain to people why this happened and why this happened. And I'm sitting there like, what? Yeah. You a man. It's that psychological thing, though, because because he said he was taught to never touch yeah, women, and, so and it wasn't even a point. And huh? I, I'm on a I'm a little on I, the fence trust about me, that trust me. I, I do feel like if you if you passively like that cannot be your response. Like right. me and my husband have heated conversations. I'm no way portraying us as perfect, you know. But I'm not gonna get in his face. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything to him that I know ain't gonna work for me. Right. Cause mm -hmm. we gonna be fighting like I them in the, that last scene in the limo, <laughs> and you know we gonna be like we don't need no damn doctor. Cause we gonna fight. So I'm not gonna get in his face and mm -hmm. like I'm not gonna put be extra his, aggressive. Right. Like put my hands right. on him because yeah. I don't want him to put his hands on me. And I've never been in. And I've only dated one other person before I dated Jason. Now, I'm not a saying I don't talk to other people, and if they watch it, they gonna be like, "Damn, I thought I was her boyfriend." You were. You were. Oh, you were. Sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> don't even be thinking about that. Yeah. Sorry. Where are you? Yeah. We're <laughs> twenty or seventeen. Yeah, we really we, we was just you know going steady. <laughs> just churn. Yeah, we was churn. not going together. I've only dated one person. Um, Man, they heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <they heard. laughs> But I, I I I can honestly say like I've never been in a situation with nobody jumping on me. Right. Now toxic, I will say in the sense of like lying and like cheating mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and I've you know justified it and things like that. And I think I took that piece of that relationship into so my yeah, relationship with mm -hmm. Jason. Mm -hmm. So like he was like this good guy and super sweet and want to hang out and do stuff all the time, and then he'd be like, oh, I'm going to Rob House, and I'd be like. Hmm. You know, because I'm like, you ain't going to damn rob house. But he legit going to rob house. Mm -hmm. But you bringing, you know, the your bags in. Up. And so anything he did initially, you know, I questioned until he was just like, you know, like, let me have my own experience with you. Right. Like, you know, I'm not that guy, whoever that guy is. Like, I don't want to be feeling like every time I'm saying I'm going somewhere, you giving me the side eye, you right. know. So right. even in that sense, it, it's not like you said, it's like, it's vague is so much room in the interpretation of what toxic is because you think you know you're fussing you're screaming and fighting just even taking that baggage from one well, or those yeah. insecurities um from one relationship that's into true. the next it doesn't give that person a fair playing field yeah that's true yeah. that's very true. But it's, it's it's so it's so messed up though because that like them experiences how do you get over them experiences if you've never been taught how to get over them experiences well, it's hard because it's right. like those experiences are not all bad. You right. know, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to wreck, you know, my ex, you know. Right, I'm right. Going right. off in the sunset doing its own thing. We were young and what I thought was tolerable, you know, I tolerated. What he thought probably was okay, right. he did, you mm -hmm. know. 
Um, and it's that whole thing too, you know, accountability. A person ain't gonna do no more than you love, you know. Sure. So you got, you know, we'll leave relationships saying, Oh, you know, Joseph wasn't shit, da 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 okay, but did he know he wasn't shit? Or, and that's what I meant in know? the beginning of this conversation. Like how do you when you walk away, that's what it is. A woman can say that he did this, he did this, and he did, and they're not gonna question the woman about what happened. They're gonna be like, "Well, why he did this? Why he doing this? Why he doing that?" Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's always it falls on the male, and yeah. we gotta understand that a lot of that comes a hand in hand thing. That's why I say in relationships we're growing together. Yeah, we have to have yeah. an understanding and try to continue to balance where people fall short. If you see that Sharika's struggling with the fact that she cannot accept right now. Maybe it's going to take a little while, but I cannot accept saying, baby, you're right. It's a problem. She know that. She's accepted that she can't say it. But now it's just working on getting her to the point of understanding. You know, because people, and I, and I say that because people really think that there's a right and wrong with everything. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I made that statement is because there's never going to be a time that she may just, you know, set up and say, you're right. Because it may not be a right and wrong situation. Yes. It may be just that I need you to have understanding for what I'm saying. That does not make you wrong. It does not make you less of anything because you don't get it. It's I just need you to right. understand. And the fact that I'm willing to come and tell you that this is a situation, that means I want you to understand. understand. But don't make it to where... I don't get it. I'm wrong. It's a bad thing. I don't yeah. understand you. Blah blah blah. And then we blow this out of proportion and you never because the situation. exactly so when now you're arguing about a new thing, mm -hmm. a whole new thing, because we couldn't salvage this little conversation right here. So that goes into <laughs> y'all. Y'all know one of them. It's one of them. Y'all watch them on YouTube. Oh, my kids be on now. <laughs> So, manipulation. Um, scenario. Babe, I'm about to get ready to go out of town. Can you buy me a purse? You know I'm not buying no purse you to go out of town. Well, babe, please buy me a purse. <laughs> I'm real good, so you can shop this purse. Is that manipulation? <laughs> it's all the manipulation if he buy into it, I guess. If he buy that purse. If he buy that purse. If he buy the purse. Yeah. Or, I think it is a Okay, scenario two. Yeah. yeah that, that's scenario two. But it's like a relationship. That. This is a relationship. So even if it is a vibe, we still need to know he vibe still going to manipulation plays a role in how we vibe. If I can get what I want out of you. By doing certain things, I'm being manipulative. That's true. Instead of me just coming out asking you directly. Hey, it's a certain way, way of man. Right. Yeah. So, scenario two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Babe, the boys coming over this weekend. We finna go. We gonna hang out. You know, I need you to cook me a couple things. Now nah, I'm not about to cook shit. You just telling me this. It's Friday and they coming tomorrow. I'm not cooking nothing. Here goes some money though, man. You will cook this for me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't matter what she said. You got to, you you still have to play a part in that manipulation. In that in that scenario, the way you put me there. Yeah, because I feel like, I, and, and even like what Ross said, it just it just stay by. Because like I know if I'm going somewhere, I'd be like, I'm a I'm gonna say, Jay, I'm going out of town. You know, with Shelby this weekend. He goes like, Where y'all going? I'm gonna be like, We going to Miami. And I need something to well. Well, for my husband, his thing is like, you gotta be like, you gotta let him have it. You gotta yes. get you. you Cause that's his vibe. vibe. That's y'all vibe. Right. So, so I get what Rob's right. saying. I trust me. I get that. But you know, it, it, when it but boils play, down but, to it. But I know too that I'm playing on the fact that you want to make sure that I look, I look nice. good. So even though I'm I probably play on that. Even though I probably could wear the stuff that's out the closet for what we're doing, because I know you want to look <laughs> me to look and present myself a certain type of way. I'm asking for this new stuff to go out of town that I probably don't need, but I know I can get I can it get based it off of delivery. Right. Yeah. 
So, mm -hmm. delivery. That's a lot of how manipulation is. Yeah. How we deliver how certain we things. So, if we now, how do you use your, how do you use your delivery, in situations, and this ain't the you know. Job squirrel on yourselves or whatever. <laughs> How do you get like okay in a situation where it no matter of fact I'm not even gonna ask that question. Joe, explain to me manipulation used in your in a relationship. Well, it's like like one relationship I'm observing now. Um uh, the man is super nice. The lady is very nice. But she she knows that she has an upper hand as far as I'm going to like whatever I want I'm gonna get and my way gonna always happen. Mm -hmm. So I'ma hide stuff from you, I'ma withhold stuff from you, and I'ma ask in a certain way. Well I know you're gonna go out of your kind way to do it. And so it's like I'm looking at it like you know what you do. Because <laughs> the, the man is just so dang on nice, and he's one of them dudes that's going to make sure his woman is straight. Mm -hmm. But she just, she's going overboard because she's like, I know I can get this, 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 and this. Is he just gullible, or is she being yes, manipulative? He's, no, he's, he is gullible, but she's manipulative she as well. The situation, she mm -hmm. knows what she's doing to she get that. She knows exactly what she's doing, and it's just like. And they're a couple? They're a married couple. They're married couple? Married for a See, for me, that disturbed well, my spirit a little yeah. bit. It just feel like, <laughs> like, it don't feel genuine. You know right. what I mean? Something on, right. Yeah. Right. right. No, it feel like you. a whole lot of give. But you know, no take. Like, well, no, yeah, no. Or take and no give, no, yeah. maybe, or whatever. Yeah. And, like, honestly, it feel like you, you, she's using him. You know what I mean? And that's not love. Right. Like, I think everybody in a relationship or a marriage have a little bit of manipulation, you know what I'm saying, in them, but not to the degree, like, one thing me and Jason is big on is deception. Yeah. We don't like being yes. lied to. Right. Yes. And we tell each other the truth, and no matter how ugly it is, we, you know, really? we'll, you know, we'll hold each other and cry like the temptations or whatever, <laughs> but, like, we're gonna tell each other the, the, truth, the truth, and I want to tell him my truth. You know, I don't want anybody else to have to tell him right. whatever. Correct. So, the whole, like, deception and Hide and stuff. I just don't feel like that's a the a marriage. Anything you got to hide, you already know. You know Off the jump, it's wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like on the flip side, if I have to jump through all of those hoops to get what Every I want time, from man. my spouse, I don't want to do that either. I don't expect Jason to tell me yes all the time to things, you know, yeah. which is why in part I get up and go to work. Right. But if I have to lie and do all that stuff to lot. get him to kind of like cater to my wants or what you know that's it's too right, much right. in this case it doesn't sound like that's what it is it's just that i know you're a good guy and you're a lookout so i'm just I'm lying and scheming yeah. and that like, that's not cool yeah yeah, yeah so i think yeah, i right. think i think she does she love got a him, but she do also, she love what do she love, love him or uh, do she love what he's able to do for her? Yeah. And I think it's both. I think it the do for me thing. thing is a lot more than just the actual love, though. So. Like, he, he love her more than she loves her. There you go. Uh, and Sarik, you said you, say you don't like high and stuff. Tell me this right here. What about when y'all be hiding all the stuff y'all be going to buy? Let me tell you something. No, wrong. Wrong. Not no, 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 me and Shannon personally. This is me. That's the whole thing. Here's my thing, though. I feel attacked because I've been riding with you. I've been trying to make sure I keep work. I've been trying to make sure we ain't got a phone friend that's been lighting up well. And it's sitting up at the shelters and you know what they're going to do. Now, you talking about Amazon. The clothes, the bags. I'm talking about You talking about online shopping. I just happen to look for the pair of shoes I ain't worn a long time. I go to You need to worry about your shoes and keep well, it moving. Hold on, when I'm moving. Yeah, like it's not it. Just move your hand and stuff out of the way. I don't know. I'm going to buy some new stuff. Act like you don't see it. That, yeah. Now you done made it your problem and it shouldn't have it's been your problem. It's not your problem. You in her business. Don't do that. Don't do that. But she hiding, right? She not no, hiding. No, she put it in the closet. closet. <laughs> Rob she just said she, she, she ain't say babe. Look, this is what I she bought. She don't want a word. I don't even have to tell you every time I buy something. I don't think that's right for you to have to know. Cause and it might, my present. And it might be something up for you. They ain't gonna give up it's all the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. I know you thought it was. I know you thought like, okay, this my dog. It's I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some tea, and I, <laughs> then we gonna draw the line right here. <laughs> Hey, that's a prison. Stuff, that was all, that is not hiding stuff. All you have to do is ask. I'm going to ask someone online. Well, you know you found it in the closet. Hey, no, you wanted some offline? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I wasn't looking okay. like that. Okay. We got to go okay. out. What if it was okay. reversed? So, right. What if it was reversed? Probably ain't because you know what? Wise by what if it was a girl? Girl. We can't do that. We can't just go buy them and hide. New PlayStation 5. Yeah, we can't do that. You just buy something like that. Like, 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 Okay, so when I've been storing this stuff away, and then I say, hey, I'm going to watch the game with the fellas, and I go in there to the storage, mm -hmm. and pull out the stuff. outfit that you ain't never seen. See, I see one you thing ain't done it, so you think what? it's not going to happen. She's going to be like, damn, it. you, you scared nah, to do it. Got, what up? She ain't gonna do that. You scared? See, one thing about me, I ain't gonna say that. I'm not like that. I'm not stuff. like that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna yeah, do I that because for that. one, I already got some things in storage, so I'm not going I to open up my stuff. mouth and say anything <laughs> because I don't want anything to backfire on me. Me. So I I'm very, I very like humble. When I have a certain thing, she may call her yeah. her friend when you leave. Like, I'm saying, like, this is motherfucker don't win and got clean. Right. Right. But I ain't gonna say that. But I ain't gonna say that. And her you gonna say, now you know you can't say shit because you just want to come boom, boom. Correct. Boom. So my friends See, that's the thing account. about our friends. We, when, at this age in our life, we have friends that hold us accountable. Yeah. Like, my cousin, she ain't gonna hold me accountable. I be wanting to ride out all day. She accountable. When I have she be like, uh uh. We holding each other accountable. It's been plenty of times that I be like, she ain't you there. So you Shannon, I know you're watching. My <laughs> dog really want to go and buy him some and, and store it. it. <laughs> for the sake of us who advocate for you, don't you say shit now. <laughs> Just tell my dog he clean. Don't say nothing. nothing. No, not so nothing. Rob, go, nothing. Go, go, don't say nothing. Don't buy you some stuff, Be Rob. real, real <laughs> cautious with your delivery. Yeah. yeah. Very. <laughs> very. 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 So, y'all, jumping back into the show. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we all have children except Joe. We, some of us have children um, that we brought into relationships. Some of us have children that we had in the relationship. How important is it that for the role that you allow your children's feelings to play in how you move in your relationship? Oh, I have a seven-year-old, and he's very temperamental and emotional. You know, I'm in the signs, so he's a Capricorn. He reminds me so much of my mama. Okay. They just in they mm -hmm. feelings. Okay. And his mean? biggest thing <laughs> is, like, I'll say something <laughs> or whatever it is, good, bad, or indifferent, and Caden, you know, he'll make a face or whatever. And I'm like, Caden, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> and it's not even, like, a disrespectful. Nothing, nothing. And I tell him, listen, we validate feelings in here. Correct. May not change. The outcome of the situation, you know? Um, but I still want to know how you feel about things or whatever. So this has really been recently, I would say in the past ooh, two, three months, that I actually paid attention to it. And now, instead of having to ask him seven, eight times what's wrong, because um, sometimes he won't tell me what's wrong. He'll go and tell his daddy, you know, because I'm, you know, good cop, bad cop. That's a boy thing. Yeah. That's a boy thing. Now, no, because my 12-year-old my will go tell me. You're going to talk it, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. it depends. It, 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 it depends yeah. on what it is sometimes. Yeah. And so, like, now we down to one or two times. Because the one time that I got to ask you, that's just you being stubborn. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, the second time is, okay, like, I really do want to get this shit off my chest. So, let me tell you. <laughs> and he'll tell me, okay, I understand that that made you feel some type of way. But, you know, this is my reasoning for doing X, Y, and Z. Because I think, too, we raise in a way where we be like... You know, I don't owe my kids no explanation. And I think it's also how you, um, your delivery or how you process things. 
you know, if you looking at things always like with a negative connotation, you do feel like, oh, I don't owe my kids no explanation. It's not about an explanation. It's about validating their feelings or sometimes yeah. helping them to make sense about things that they can't do. Like my 12-year-old right. want to hang out to the bang out. You know, he got his daddy and his uncle in him. He want, you know, if the if the streets open, he want to be out. He want to hang out. And so just having to have those conversations with him because he sees other friends doing things. You know, we first thing we would be like, don't tell me what Shelby Key is doing. No, you know, I ain't their mama. You know, no. Having to explain to him, like, this is the times. This is the climate. Right. You know, like, even sitting in the parking lot with you at a fun station, I'm still not close enough to get to you. And, you know, with everything that's going mm -hmm. on, the climate doesn't say you can hang out. So mm -hmm. I do think that you do need to have those conversations with your mm -hmm. kids and help them to make sense because... If you just keep closing them out, you're going to find, like, find as they become adults, they're going to stray farther away. Correct. And you lose that closeness, you lose that rapport. And I want my kids to be like mama's boys to the depth of me, you know, mm -hmm. not in the sense of like, you know, like what we think of mama boys are always, you know, meddling in their business mm -hmm. and stuff like that. No, I just always want to have that close, have that, that, that trust. Yeah. And, you know, know that, okay, if I find myself in a situation, whatever it is, big or small, I, I can talk to my mama about anything. I don't have to go out here and none do nothing judgment. crazy. Yeah, no judgment, 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 zone. judgment zone or whatever. And I think it starts like, you know, if you start trying to form a relationship with your kids when they become teenagers, my opinion, it's too late. You know, so... Um, I think it's important, like, to to have that validation and let them have that room for expression. As long as it's respectful, you know. Yeah. I always, now, I always tell my kids that it's just the, it's your deliverance. My daughter's dog, she the oldest. Her deliver. Did you just say that like that? Like who you? And she had the back. We yeah. had the backtrack. But it always. But yeah, you right. Like they feelings is. Yeah. You gotta take their feelings into consideration. And I think All sometimes the too, they don't always mean to be disrespectful. Cause like my twelve year old, he like both my kids have a little bit of me in them. But that seven year old, when they say God will give you back to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I just had this conversation. God, I wasn't that bad. You lied. <laughs> Cause I'm about every day. I'd be like, oh. It's make, the mouth. Fell in there. Yes, That's I didn't really make it. I did. Like, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go on their rest. I'm gonna have to take this lace front off. I hope they let me take my picture on this side because this is where my edge is the fullest at. Because I'm gonna keep it here. Girl, get out. <laughs> And you I know. Be thinking about <laughs> all of that, Sharika. Like. And I know. People <laughs> made me their profile picture, screenshot me, all of that. I'd be like, Kayla, no. You be a mean. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, mean. <laughs> oh, mean. And Look, how it's going. I know how it started yeah. and how it ended. <laughs> oh, God. You know, Tyler, that's the list. Yeah, yeah, we eat them up, Julio, over here. Yeah, yeah goodness. Good. But I know like, the 12 year old, like, he's so, you know, he's going through that preteen, so he'd be like, <sighs> like, you know, because he's trying to learn how to express himself. And I'd be like, Taylor, I fight kids. You know, bring it back in, you know. And he'd be like, Ma, I didn't mean it like that. And I understand that was, you know, free game warning. And he'd bring it back in, you know, because just learning how to, you know, like to get it out. But I think people need to allow their kids that room to express themselves. Yeah. As my girls got older, I started having more of an understanding of the expression, um, of self-expression, because... When I was their age, we were allowed to go to our moms with our opinions, but not about everything. You know, growing yeah. up, they told us that the door was open. Yeah. It, it was cracked. You got the door mm -hmm. open? My mom it was cracked. Closed. We didn't have no opinion. We had, no, we had the crack. We had the crack, though, where your opinion mattered about really nothing, but she mm -hmm. made you think it mattered. Like, See, we had the crack, though. Nice. My, my <laughs> door is open. I have an open door policy yeah. because I have daughters that are being raised in uh, from 2003 and we 2020 now. It's a yeah. different mindset yeah, yeah, yeah. on the children. I need my door to be open at all times. Yeah. I need you to know that the door is always yeah. open. Yeah. That whenever you breathe, yeah. you can oh. breathe right in here. Yeah. I'm, I'm the person you come breathe to. Like right. I need that type of, you know, room with them. And um, I realized that when they were around 12, 12, 10, 11, 11, sixth grade, it became the time that the fussing became more because middle school took place. <laughs> and kids starting to find themselves, this is when your kids determine whether they're going to be a leader or they're going to be a follower. A follower. And you, you, you find yeah, that out literally in middle yeah. school. 
So if you're if you don't have a concept of understanding your kids' feelings, you gonna be the enemy in middle school. Point middle blank. School period. Was rough. Middle school. Or nobody told middle me school, it was rough. Middle school was rough just for me in middle school. Yeah. So when my kids experienced middle school, I was prepared. Yeah, I wasn't. I got to get on this. Was a total, only thing that different. only thing that my kids did in middle school was try to date versus me. I wasn't give a damn about no boys. I was just trying to get through school. <laughs> I'm trying to not be picked on today. I'm trying not to be kicked because I'm the nerd. I had those type of problems in middle school. So now, but now when a person see who you are and that you will fight back, that's when it became, yeah, now yeah. we got these type of problems. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I didn't have the problems my kids got. They got the boy, had the boy problems in middle school. I was prepared for that. They ain't have to go to our well, Erica. Erica was the one that everybody wanted to fight. Everybody wanted to fight my baby. But I, know, I was prepared for that. But I had, it was all about that feeling, though. So. And nobody know why. She was them. pretty. Yeah, and all the boys, all yeah, the little boyfriends cool. wanted, all the little boys wanted them. Little girls, and and my aunt, she had problems. But my baby was not mm-hmm. happy with that. She was Jada and Jada and they, every other day. I'm gonna get out my sister's face because we finna go to war. But it. Jay, Erica don't know about this. She just like, Jay. You know? <laughs> Erica, Erica, you know, Jada come up and Erica fight her back talking, you know, talking back because she's not fighting. She not gonna get she gonna do everything to avoid that fight. My baby called me one day and she said, Mom, it's this girl in this office. She said, I came to the office to call you, Mom. And this girl over there unlacing her shoes, ready to fight me. I said she what? In the office. And I can see her face phone. now. I can see her face now. <laughs> she, had, she my child is on the phone. Look, I can see her face. Watching this girl on the phone unlace her shoes. Ma, she over here unlace her shoes, Ma. I ain't playing. Ma, she over here unlace her shoes, Ma. And I'm like, what well, you what's going on? You know? And I and now cause I'm finna get beside myself on this phone, cause now I'm mad that you're showing this girl feel. That's what right. I'm mad about. Right. I don't care nothing about right. what she doing. Yeah. Right. I'm caring all about that you showing her fear. You put that fear to the side. I don't care. You better be I don't care about that fear. You have you today you gonna learn that fear don't exist. Even if you take an L, you better go out. Exactly. Like a but that you know, but that, my baby was so scared. Like I had to take her feelings into consideration because I literally had on that phone, my anger went from zero to ten in a in two seconds when she said that girl unless her shoes and she sent up there like she about to bust into tears about this. And I'm sitting on the other line because I'm like six minutes away. I'm in Southwood, but she, I'm on my way though. You hear what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> February number, right down the road. Right. I'm right. on my right. way. I'm, I'm coming. Right. I'm coming. When I get there, they be like, Miss Collins. Uh-huh. I'm listening. <laughs> and, and, and you know, but her, all I can think about is because I know my child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking about her feelings. All I'm thinking about is Erica just don't let her see you show your emotions like this. So she got shook, shook it off and got herself together. My, by the time I get there, they got a little girl, you know, in the back office talking to her. But She's when as soon as I get there, I'm run to me and hug me, grab me. Like, I'm safe now. And when that mo- it was that moment that made me realize that no matter what, this is their safety net. Mm-hmm. So if I close that off and don't allow them to express themselves to me and openly and you know, something because they done even in conversation, they done slipped up and said a cuss word. They so and they so mm-hmm. you know, they so um involved in trying to tell you, yeah, to tell you what's yeah. going on. Or whatever, and she does like. I think hey. we do that with our man. Yeah. Well, is that? Yeah, Jason be like, huh. bring it back in. <laughs> be over the top. We yeah, be over the top. I be like, bitch, let me take it. <laughs> <laughs> bring it back in. Bring it back. Come on back. But you be so caught up in it. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Don't yeah. Don't yeah. Don't yeah. Don't so he give me that look like I'm, I was with you right there. Until I'm going to bring it back in. Like that was like, hold up. Now I know you're telling the story, but hold up. Hold up. So feelings are very important. We know that the kids, and and with that, how involved are they in the relationship? Like in the house relationship, is it? Something like when things go on, do y'all have the family times where you can sit and be like, okay, y'all come out, we finna talk about this mm-hmm. and we're gonna fix this and you know what what's the dynamic with it? How do you all make that work? 
And Joe, have you ever, before we talk about the married people, Joe, have you ever dated anyone with children? Yeah. Yeah, when I, by the time I got 24, I threw the no kid thing out the window. I'm like, I live in the real world. We got kids. <laughs> don't Especially know. this day and age, Joe. They got kids, this day though. Yeah. You gonna be a stepdad or not? Yeah. 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 Okay. I just been lucky. <laughs> so, they know. got kids, but, Joe. But, I mean, it's going into it with a realistic mindset. Uh, not trying to set no real expectations because you got to understand your dynamic with the person that you're with and then mm -hmm. understand their dynamic with the kid and understand your dynamic with the child, how everything mm -hmm. going to flow. So And I that just, other parent. Right. So you just go in there just like ready to learn. So don't go in there with no fixed mindset because y'all have issues. Go in there ready to learn and, and just if y'all mess, y'all mess. If y'all don't, then don't try to make it something that it's not because mm -hmm. you could make the whole situation work. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, Rob, you the only one that's in the well. No, you are too. Your husband has um other children. How? What's the discipline cycle? They grown. You don't want Rob to go. I'm, a, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Rob. 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 What's the How do y'all deal? I'm y'all. I said I want to step it up, but I know our um IG video about to get ready. Let's get some wine. Too. So. I get past the cups, but you know, I I do it, Joe. We don't want that on camera. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Rob, we'll start you with you. With How Rob? do you all deal with the discipline um, roles when it comes to the children? Um, being that y'all have a um, blended family. Tell me start, Joe. Uh, I'm kind of like, uh, if I'm here, like, it ain't going to be no role I can't play. So, um, whatever I need to do. Or whatever, I'm gonna do it if I'm here. Um, I know I ain't gonna do nothing wrong to him. Um, so I really don't feel like it's any like one person got to do it this way or let her do, yeah, it. do it. Nice certain situations that I feel like yeah. she can handle better than me. Mm -hmm. She's been doing it longer than me. But you know, if I'm there and I need to be handled, then I'm gonna bring it on. I know with my um growing up with my stepdad. My mom didn't let him discipline my stepdad because he, he got a mouth. He from down south and his mouth cursing like so my mom he didn't she didn't let him discipline us at all. And by the time they got together, we was like we knew him before she did. So we liked mm -hmm. him anyway. It's just when they got together we start liking him. <laughs> but she would never let him discipline us because when I say he would he like he can be on the phone talking to his children now and they grown. Especially his daughters. They don't want their dad to be mad because he gets on there and he goes, I mean, goes off. <laughs> like, so my mom never let, he never disciplined us, never, ever disciplined us. I, I don't know. I, I think because my husband, he didn't really, he disciplined my kids, but my kids, they'll tell you quick, my mama crazy. So we do, we, we be trying to be on best behavior because we know she will really, so he don't really have to, dis, he don't have to discipline them like I Cause he you knows, like I could just speak my kids. I could be on the phone. They could do something. Them jokers on the phone crying. Mm -hmm. They, they, but I ain't, I ain't even got the words out my mouth. What I'm gonna say? They already, I can hear it in their voice. Like, uh, mom, but I'm not. So it, it, it depends. It depends. But I, I only had to discipline my husband child once, and that I never disciplined his kids again. Cause that was just a whole nother situation with their mom and I was just like I ain't you know I ain't even got time that's y'all children but I do say this if your children in my presence and they acting out I'm going to say something to them because I just believe adult is an adult a child is a child and I do believe adults should I don't I always tell people uh tell a child I don't even care if your parents there I'm gonna say what I got to say to you and I tell you and if your mama got something to say she need to speak up or if your daddy got something to say they need to speak up but you're not going to disrespect no other adult in front of me as a child. I'm just not going to let that, yeah, let that happen. Yeah. So I think it, it depends. Um, when I met Jason, of course, we're 10 years. Um, there's a 10-year difference. So there was like a 10-year difference between me and his kids. And at that, I mean, when we first started dating, I mean, I don't see 
Y'all are all right. 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 Y'all that was a priority, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We could be hanging out right now, but if Shelby call and say, hey, something going on at Kate Sullivan, and right. I need you to go check on your daughter, it's, like, it's no. what, you riding or you getting dropped off? Because I'm going, you right. know? It's mm-hmm. not going to be, well, call me when you get there, let me know, you know, what they're doing. Now, that I would give give him, you know? I, that was one of the things that attracted me to him, how hands on he was with his kids. Because my cool. dad has, you know, kids from different women or whatever and growing up like I had a relationship with my sisters and like we spend the night every other weekend at my dad's house or whatever so it wasn't like you know so much of growing up and not knowing you know who your siblings was or whatever so seeing Jason kind of in that same capacity um that my daddy was in was also a level of attraction because you hear about all these guys and they have kids and they don't take care of them and whatever and so that wasn't a scenario for him like you know we going to Destin or Jacksonville because he going you know back to school shopping or whatever you know I have to bring him in sometimes I'm like you want to get all that you know but it was just kind of like that thing like I just like you know buy things and do things and look out for my kids um now as things kind of progress and my role is changing now my expectations are different you know I don't need to be um regarded like as a stepmom because my thing was I knew I wasn't gonna call nobody stepmom you know mm-hmm. um because I know how my mama was so my thing was you know just as long as we have that level of respect that. that this is our house this ain't mm-hmm. your daddy's house you know because I can pay the bills if he is and then if he gone, you know, because at this time we don't have no kids, so I can just move somebody else in, you know. <laughs> and you can get your head back. Uh, you know, but I just wanted that level of respect. Like, don't come in and be disrespectful. Like, this is my daddy's house, and, yeah. you know, I don't have to acknowledge you or whatever. We ain't got to be the best of friends. We ain't got to come by y'all. We ain't got to do none of that. Sure. But as, as things progress, I wanted that level of, you know, of respect, you know. And now... We married, and now we got a child, and now we got two child. Now, I think as things evolve, then it's like your expectations change. change so it's yeah, like, it okay, does. still, you know, we don't have to be on this, you know, stepmom, you know, stepchild thing. And I don't, even to the day, I don't refer to them as my stepchildren. I just, something about that, I don't like. I always yeah. call them my bonus babies, you know. Mm-hmm. And they grown. Some of them got their own kids. We ain't doing grandma, we go work on them or something like that because I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm 37, you know, but I, you know, but when the holidays come, when birthdays come, stuff like that, like, it's not like them your kids, you know, or them your grandkids, you know, Jason have to bring me back in, like, we're not buying all of that, but I don't like this, I don't want the separation. I always want my kids to have that relationship and that bond with mm-hmm. their siblings, not out, I, I don't like saying outside and all of that, like, no, like, that relationship and bond. I actually um, text my oldest bonus baby today and was like, hey, you know, are we still doing Sunday dinner? Because it's like, they have like this closeness with their dad, you know? So they like to be around him and all of that stuff. And she had expressed when she was over for dinner two weeks ago, like we need to be doing something, you know, once a week, I mean, once a month where we come over and we have dinner. Okay, say, so let y'all wanna come over for dinner? You know, those type of things. And not to say that they weren't doing it before, it just now she wants to make it like a reoccurring thing, what we're doing it. Okay, no problem, whatever, because at the end of the day, like when I close my eyes and I'm not here anymore, I don't want my, my two kids to be like, okay, so who is this sister? Yeah. Who is this? You know, like, I, you know, they I don't, need I, know yeah, they to need know to have those relationships. Have relationship. And I think that, you know, like, why would you want to come in between a man that's trying to be involved with his kids? Because you could, I don't like saying like baby mom, baby daddy, but you could easily be the mother of his child that he not with. Mm-hmm. Don't you want that daughter to be open where he has a relationship with your child and all right. that? Like, I'm not attracted right. to a guy that don't take care of his kids. Because we, you know, it's some women, internal. yeah, some women think that you know they the exception to that are because you know she Shelby was just tripping, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. like that. Even I don't care how much tripping Shelby doing, that's still not an excuse to take care of your child. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you got to find a way to take care of your child outside of that. My mama and daddy, they married, they tried it, it didn't work. But I just told my dad this on Sunday when I went to go visit him in Jacksonville. 
I was like, one of the things that, you know, I like about you and my mama relationship is that growing up, my mama never had anything bad to say about my daddy. Mm -hmm. Never about my dad. Yeah. You know, like, like you know, just like, like my you mama find, never, find my mama like never that. said anything yeah. bad about my daddy. So to me, you know, when Jesus was walking on water, he was right out there with him. Yep. Now, he wasn't mm -hmm. perfect, yep. but I ain't never had to look for my daddy. I ain't never had to right. know where he was right. or anything like that or whatever. Um, I ain't had a birthday or a holiday, anything he missed, whether he was able to get me a gift or not. Like, you know, like I've had that level of involvement with him. So I just think it's like tacky. It's like it's a turn off for a guy to know he got kids and don't that care. Yeah. So what about well, when that move on? Yeah. And that like their kids don't exist. Does that happen too? That happens but too. I but I I think um the reason why that was a question the, the blended family thing was a question is because it's not ever really um, and when you're in a good relationship, mm -hmm. it's never ever a moment where the fa the people that are in the relationship are causing the problems for the child. That's what I mean. Because how do you deal with that? Because I know when I was in when um men we oh god and I and I never wanted nothing but a boy. I ain't even want girls. I wanted nothing but boys. I cry for. Yeah. So when I got my little bonus baby, boy, well, I was the happiest person in the world. Second. But we never had peace outside. Outside. Dealing with that other parent. Yeah. So when you, and you guys got good situations where you want to deal with it, your children are directly from your husband, so he don't have to deal with that with you. Mm -hmm. But not saying that it never happened with some of the other children mm -hmm. because you got blended family. Mm -hmm. So... When, if, has there ever been a time where the outside parent has not been cooperative and you and that caused friction inside? Mm -hmm. How do you get through that? Because that could be because the outside stuff is toxic, is. that's a it toxic is. ass situation, and then you bring in that, and especially when you've been when, like I said, y'all good in here with the situation, but. Outside is causing friction. How do you, how do you shake off the friction, friction outside? The outside. Outside. All right, it ain't even enough. Because Candace, you got blended. You got a whole blended, blended family. All y'all blended people in here. <laughs> I've never had to deal with her. Because from from the first time I disciplined the, that child that time, he he literally told her, "If you ever disrespect her, I swear what I'll do to you." So I never had to deal with her at all. But I, I even for all. him though, what did it I, cause issues? Uh -uh. It ain't I, I, cause issues I never let it cause issues with us. Good. I never let it cause issues with us. Cause them your kids, you're gonna take care of those kids. Mm -hmm. He treat my kids like my kids is his and vice versa. So I never he never had no problems with my kids. Um dad now only problem he ever had is him disrespecting me. He didn't have to say something to him, but as far as when it came down to the children and stuff. Like, never had no issues, never had to, like, deal with her on the level when it came down to the kids. I let him handle all that, because especially as we were dating, look, that ain't my responsibility. That ain't even my, I, I don't got no say-so, because I'm not your wife. Mm -hmm. Now, when I become your wife and became your wife, that's different. Now, I got, like you say, the roles change now. But as just dating, look, I, 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 I give my opinion to him, but you do what you want to do. But I'm gonna just voice my opinion. If you ask me, I'm gonna give it. If you don't, I, I just didn't say that. I didn't say that now because I was like, I ain't got time to do it. I ain't got time to do it. And then I witnessed, and I witnessed that from my mom with my with my um with my stepdad. She didn't get involved in mm -hmm. the situations with his with his kids and their their mom mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't she didn't mm -mm. like she let my stepdad handle all all of that. Like they was welcome to come to the house. Like they was welcome. We all siblings. But she just witnessing that from her and from other family members and stuff that they had to deal with. Like, I just was like, nah, it ain't my role to say nothing. So I ain't gonna say nothing. Like I said, after that, this one, that child once and it was a big old glow up, I was like, never. I was like, never again. So I never had to like deal with her on, on that level. And it came down to those kids. And now, you know, it's different now because kids have cell phones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really don't have to. It's some. It's, I know some people that they don't even talk to the other parent. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. The child, the child, child is yeah, the child is just direct talking. So yeah. it's 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 very different now. But you know, it's it can be crazy. My situation with my my kids, dad, it was not me dealing with having the troubles and the situation. It was the, his girlfriend bothering me because the relationship that me and him had and it stopped us from really doing our, we was good as co-parent but when she came into the situation and the relationship with him it just went haywire because she was so jealous of the relationship that me and him had and she was just like how y'all can get along look I don't I can't well, I understand why you and yeah, your, why um, right. your two children's fathers the two that you have I don't understand why y'all don't get along but look we had to work on this relationship we was friends before we even started dating, because we was high school sweethearts, but we was friends first, so we didn't build, we grew together. Mm -hmm. But she, to this day, she still don't understand the relationship that me and him had, and it's, it, it, it really hurt, because I was close with his family, his mom, his, all of that. They was like my other, they was really like my other parents. This was somebody that I was engaged to plan to marry at one point, but when she came, it was just like, to the point like he started hating me all over again because of whatever she said to him. So I was, you know, it's just like, well, our kids at a certain age now, I don't even, to, I don't even say nothing to them. <laughs> I don't talk to them, no nothing. That's almost like, um, it can also destroy the relationship that you guys build as co-parents, but it also can destroy the relationship between the kids uh -huh, uh -huh. and the parents because um of what the outside influences are allowed to do and then you got kids having to go from house to house uh -huh. so they're having to hear different things which why in our house we never discuss nothing we ain't talking about your mama we ain't talking about your mama business we ain't talking about nothing over here you I can't never walk away nothing. from this house saying that anything was said done or because i i understand how I never knew, thought that people could be that way, mm -hmm. but I understood now at that moment because I used to say at first when he was saying, "Man, this 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 shit crazy," and I'm like, "They ain't no way this girl like that. People ain't like they ain't no way nobody even like this." Now God damn, people are though. <laughs> <laughs> people, people, it ain't no hard. way. It, it's we crazy, had DCL at our house every other week. Oh wow. I wanted, I'm like, I pull out my hair by this. So, like, we, you got to have some type of level of understanding. Mm -hmm. And bring, and this is my other thing. Make the person who you're about to deal with aware yeah, of how you, what's going on. strong that situation yeah. is. Yes, because even when he was telling me and making me aware, I didn't believe it. I just was like, there's no way in hell People that this of. is happening. And yes, it was. Yeah. So you can't shake off what you, you can't shake off all your baggage coming mm -hmm. into a relationship. Especially when it comes out. But making a kids. person aware of your baggage is going to help the situation a lot more. Yeah. Because um, lots of times when they are aware, they can go ahead and make that decision mm -hmm. right now. Is this what I want to deal with? Right. Like, I don't think Jason. I'm sorry. You can go ahead. No, nah, just real quick. Just like last week, we were saying, um, make sure you understand what you're getting into. So mm -hmm. this week, it's like, up. make sure you communicate with somebody getting into. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Either way, y'all know. Yeah. I don't think. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that Jason had baggage coming into our relationship. Um, cause he had six kids and that means three moms or whatever. Um, two moms, easy peasy, like easy to get along with. You know. Two moms, easy peasy. <laughs> um, Rob said something when we were here last week that I could relate with, and he was saying like how Shannon is like big on how you talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, the, uh, wait a minute. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because if you got a problem with Rob, you got a problem with mm -hmm. me. Oh, right, and so I'm big on delivery, mm -hmm. and I think that that was and is the biggest issue that I may have had. And my husband can be so, it's excusatory at work. Mm -hmm. Like, right whatever, now. I ain't worried about it. Oh, we worried. We very worried. And I'm going to need to let, before I close my eyes, 
you gotta know he got me. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's something about you thinking you can talk to my man any kind of way that's not gonna sit well yeah. with my spirit. Oh, no. So when he said that last week about Shannon, I was like, my nigga, because let me tell you something. You ain't, you just can't talk to my husband any kind of way. Like, you know, I might fight my mom depending on what she calls it to Co my correct. husband. Not, not correct. Come correct. Not. You it's know what I mean? So correct. Jason be like, chill, it's not that serious. It's very, it serious. Is very serious. And the problem that you don't, and now we got a problem because you don't realize how serious this is and you find and I'm, But before we got that problem, I'm going to tell you, don't make this a problem. Don't, don't make, make this a problem. problem. Make this a problem. Because whatever I'm on, you need to be Because I'm offensive very. about this. So right. don't make this a problem. Let's be on the right. side. Be on my side. Right. <laughs> and if I'm, on, if I'm on 110 about you, I need you to at least be on. Nine. Nine. At least. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm on one ten, you need to be on nine. He's, man, he'll look at some and go, oh, no, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Let me respond. <laughs> so what you said? That's what you said. I, let me get the phone. You know, let me go and turn this up a notch, you know. And so, not maybe always the best decisions, but even in my hot head moments, I can say anything that I do. I can stand on it and I can sleep on it. Like when I wake up in the morning, I don't feel like, damn, I should have did that. No, I meant to do that. I mean, come no, little, little words in no, there, no I probably could have took out. You know what I mean? But, but the meat and potatoes of that, I meant that. And, you know, even in all of my craziness, he'll be like, you know, I love the way you love me. Mm -hmm. You like you go hard for me, yeah. Because this ain't what you know. That's not what we doing. Um, and I don't, you know, he's not gonna let anybody. Um, disrespect me. There's a fine line in the sand because he also he know what he signed up for. So he know like I gotta. I I only can let this go so far because mm -hmm. once she cut up on them, she gonna cut up on me. Right. So yeah. yeah I, just like I'm gonna be at somebody front door, I'm gonna be at this front door too. You know what I mean? Because now we having a now the problem is why is this okay for you know such and such you know to be able to communicate or talk to me a certain type of way. So I think it has to be certain level of, of balance but I do know that at times I do push the envelope on things because I want my husband to be treated respected and talked to a certain type of way because I know the type of man he is I know the type of husband he is and I know the type of father he is so some of the stuff that you take to make go fly oh, okay. I guess I've been blessed I don't, ain't nothing wrong with that I don't have nothing to dirty death so. that's good that's, that's good thing. And I won't even say it's drama, you know, like, they have their misunderstandings about things, and I feel like maybe sometimes it's communicated in a way that don't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. That's what it be. And I probably need to take myself out of the equation, but some of the stuff that it just don't, it's a delivery. Like, I just feel like, like yeah, that's 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 delivery, it don't matter, it don't matter. What? And what? I think it's it's what, because, it, it don't matter. Yeah, because she know you, because she I know he got a husband, a wife. Mm -hmm. She already know how you're going to deal with the situation, so if you step out of bounds, yeah. You have to expect what's coming. Oh, yeah. And I I'm think it's a ter uh, territorial thing too, because in a way, it's 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 the husband element of it too. Don't get me wrong, but it's the friendship. Like me and Jason are friends, so mm -hmm. it's almost like, oh, mind. you talking to my friend? You know, yeah, it's almost yeah. like you know, like your friend may be okay with girl. You know, Shelby just acting funny. Oh, okay, we'll call her. Okay, <laughs> what's, what's up? You know what I mean? You know, so it's that element of it too. Like we have a friendship. Like that's. My right. dog. So if you have, I mean, it could be one of his homeboys, you know, like he don't have to be yeah, bothered with his homeboys. But, 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 but if he was but if he to say, you know, I'd be like, well, that's right. you know, like, well, what's up? You know, like type of thing. So I'm, I'm sure he's probably mindful of the things that he communicate to me because, like, I ain't no, you know, killer, you know. I will fight, you know, even if I get beat up, I ain't running from yeah, nobody, me, but I'm, sure I'm, <laughs> I'm big on, like, I guess I'm territorial, so, like, now, do you, you think, know, now, with that, because that's a good point that you just said just then, um, there are certain things he comes to tell you, or there may be certain things he won't tell you because he know how you're going to respond, um, that, with that, how would you like how do you feel about that because not it don't not, happen and we don't argue about because it because i, I get it but i'd be mad because you're thinking like what we using our hiding storage i feel like he, <laughs> you know he's storing information from me but he's doing it for the best but he's doing it for the best yeah. so like, that way <laughs> and that's what i was gonna say sometimes Story certain information Story. that I share is not always good sometimes um keeping things if I can deal with this on my own and I've handled this 
it's probably not best to tell my also, partner about also it. Also, it's like protecting your partner. Too, exactly. You know yeah. Because mm -hmm. I feel you, like, don't raise I'm your voice. I'm a for mine all day, every day. Like, because I know for me, I'm I'm not a, I got a mouth, but I'm not a very argumentative person like that. But I feel like we can discuss things without getting to mm -hmm. these levels. So mm -hmm. I'm like, if we, if we in this and we're not yelling at each other, the hell make you think you can yell at me. Yeah. 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 Right. That's crazy. And so that's my mind. So, so I do feel you with that. Like, nah, you're going you gonna to reverse how you said that and come back correct because if not, we're going to have a problem. And that's just so Serious problem. mellow. You know, he like not a, he not a chump. He not none of that. He just... He like, he got a line, like you know what I mean. Like, really, what's my line and side. what's his line? He's like, you ready to go to ten? It's serious, yeah. like. And I'm more a bad person. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna lay back. Because when my children fall, <laughs> when my kids ready to go, go all the time. <laughs> when my kids That's fall, I always had a really good exactly. communication. We always had a real good relationship, mm -hmm. and I think a little bit of that kind of had Aaron kind of skeptical a little bit, like. Cause he's not, you, he's yeah, not cause used he's to not it. right with his with his people. Yeah. So like, and then he was like, you know, he started like, oh, that's good, that's good. I like this. I'm, I'm this, this makes me calm. It mm -hmm. makes me good. But then, um, one day got sideways on and texted me and said, bitch. Oh. Ooh. Oh. All I did was forward the message. <laughs> Cause I was that mad. Cause I wouldn't like me the peace. I'm the peacemaker. I don't tell. I wouldn't have even told Darian that I'm had you. it been like me and him arguing. If this was an argument, and then you know we going backwards and forth about something, mm -hmm. I probably said something. He gonna be like, man, just you know, look and I'm so sorry, yeah, yeah, but this ain't argue, even though. no. We're not even gonna be yeah, arguing. See, that's the thing. We don't even do that anyway. But it was something where he didn't agree with what I said I was gonna do, mm -hmm. and he was like, that's stupid as. And I was just like, what? I was just reading the message. I just said, yeah. you know, and I don't even know. I ain't get no phone call from there or nothing. All I know is that you know, the situation was settled. Yeah. And after that, two weeks later, uh, they we back. Everybody back to normal. Can you pick up my stepdaughter from the school? That like they communicate, mm -hmm. asking each other, can they get each other kids? Cause they had a step. I mean, Greg had a stepkid at the same school my daughter went to. Not everybody friendly and copacetic. I don't know so what they have to take for that. I just that, know that, that man thing, to put that to other put the, man in his to place. So let you know that she's not step, alone yeah. no more. This, that's simply that. Yeah. She's not that alone no more. Friends she not by herself said, no more. And she always said, she said, people will try you when they know it ain't no man in the house. She said, that go for female and male. But when they know that it's a man presence. In that house with you, different. they come at you in a mm -hmm. totally different way than them coming at you when it ain't nobody else in there with you. And that's that's true. I that's think definitely from, true. Uh, like my wife, baby daddy, or whatever, I think from them just dealing with her, they know how far to go with her period. Yeah. Before it even gets to you got a husband, they just know how far to they go, go with her. her. Yeah. That's a respect thing, period, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's mutual. Yeah. You don't have to even deal with it. All right, y'all. Let me let me get my last question because it's getting late. <laughs> aha <laughs> moments. Aha moments. Um, when do your aha moments appear? Are they do they come in before or after a situation occurs in your relationship? Do you have that revelation before or after you done jumped all off the rocket and showed it? When the when the aha moment come in? You mean like the the revelation of damn I messed up? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly <laughs> oh. what it say. Do you ever check yourself and say you knew better than that shit? I know, I know. Before or after? I know I'm fucking up. Before I do it, while I'm doing it, <laughs> after I do it. I'm doing this on purpose. I meant to. So all your aha moments. I'm mad. Are, we all gonna be mad. <laughs> you don't really have the aha moment because you know what you're doing. Yeah, I see. For I me, had yeah. aha moments. Like I done hit on topics about things that I didn't think through about how to, it was gonna reverse on me. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, so now what you got to say? <laughs> and then I'd be like, wow. So we really doing this? And he'd be like, yeah, you started this shit. <laughs> not not what what you got to say or whatever. So sometimes I have 
gotten so caught up in a moment <laughs> thinking I ain't thinking shoot, through. Shoot, shoot, yeah, shoot. just shoot and ran out of bullets. Ran out of bullets. And, and no then bullet he come bullet. fully loaded. You AK forty seven with a top. You finna get this work. Tony <laughs> my the clip. And I'm like <laughs> So what I was trying so to say was long. Yeah. Really? No. So like I've been but that situation. I can't. But I'm <laughs> but I'm out of damage control. <laughs> okay, so what I was trying to say was you know, that's, that's going to be my delivery or, so we really going to do this or, wow, so yeah. you hear me load the belt now? Like, I'm going to play victim. Yeah. Oh, my God, Sharika. Yeah. Oh, so you do the victim role, Sharika? You too strong for the victim role now. If it were, but, but that, that go back to the manipulation. The manipulation. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You know, the little mad walk away or whatever. And I know he going like, um, you know, he'll probably do his walk away. He going somewhere in the room, the living room. But I do my, my walk away. I got my phone like, bitch, you ain't going to believe I just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> because the one thing I don't want to do is laugh. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I still got to be mad. But in my mind, I'm thinking <laughs> I just want to bust out laughing because how did I walk in this shit? You know, because yeah. oh I'm thinking God, I'm the master artist of all this. Yeah, I, got, I done thought this thing through. I done dotted my I's and my T's. And you didn't read the fine print. Mm. Yes. Okay. Not that says, okay. not between the lines. You know you done fucked up, right? Right, yeah. right here. Yeah. Right here. And so, <laughs> when I had that aha moment, it's more of a humor for me, and I'm trying because I wear what I'm thinking on my face, whether it's good, bad, funny, mm -hmm. and I'm trying not to laugh because if I could just get down the hallway or somewhere with my phone, I don't care if I could See? just, I gotta just shoot <laughs> Shelby a text. Like, <laughs> when I call you in a minute, answer, you, know, so, you know, something. <laughs> because it's like, how did you do that? Like, you ain't think. Like, no, you ain't think how that was going back five years. Yeah. I, I sit there and have a conversation with myself. Do I want to fuck up? Do I really want to take it over here? I do that too, Joe. And like, sometimes I'm like, nah, let it go. Because 95% of the time, I'm chilling, I'm cool. I'm going to let you have it. But that 5%, mm -hmm. that 5%. I'm sitting there thinking about it. And when I go, I he got, uh, when he go, he on the deep end. That's not I am. Like, I'm too much right about it. Because that. now you push me. Not because, like, I'm one of those people that I'm going to do everything in my power to not hit buttons. Mm -hmm. I don't like buttons because I'm a button opener and I'm gonna push them bitches every last one all the way in. <laughs> and, and like, you don't like buttons, this me. This, yeah. this, 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 I'm and, trying to and, find it. And I don't want you to find <laughs> it. I, and I don't want you to because as soon as you start touching them buttons, now you just, now you opening up stuff. And I'd rather it just be all peace. You say what you got to say, and then I might laugh that off. But mm -hmm. if you keep going and you jigging at me, it's all it's fair all games. games. All games. And then I'm going to win. Because I'm going to have so much ammo. Yeah. Because you done shot them little tiny bullets you yeah. had. <laughs> you dead over there. Boy, and I got a whole guy. You like. You like boy on Hall of Nights with a cap gun. You're yep. <laughs> like, So just like, so I'm really just always, because <laughs> with me, and I know it's not a good thing, which is why I had, when I went to therapy, this was one of the huge, biggest things that I had to focus on, holding stuff in. Mm -hmm. um, and expressing myself in my relationships because I tend to wait until you done step on all 10 of my toes and instead of the first blow, two. You just blow up. Yeah. And then, and, and now I got a list of shit. Oh, yeah. Because... That's, that's just how much. It's like you just that's been, just hold, you been much, holding because all I don't of want it. to do that. I don't want to bring out the list. I got to fix the like situation that. before you bring out the before I gotta bring out the list. Yeah. Oh, because one thing about it, yeah. I keep yeah. the receipts. Yeah. I got the receipts. I got, the receipt. got, I got the all the receipts. We I got all the receipts. So right and she like, okay, so now that we <laughs> talked about that. So you were mad at Thanksgiving. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Shelby had all the I'm like, <laughs> not the Thanksgiving. No, I don't day. remember. <laughs> right. Okay, so you don't remember that. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's <laughs> nice. Remember when we were at Shannon House and Rod walked in and you had made? No. And 08? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
in 05, we were at Candy Town. I'd be like, God, listen. And went back so yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, 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 Right. Yeah. But you know, that, that's her well, love. Like, that's my love language. Because I'm going to give you enough. Growth. I pay attention. And you I'm going to let you hang yourself. And then this is the thing. And I'm hoping you don't. See, that's, that's my loyalty with people. Is that I just, I'm hoping that at some point you realize that you fucked up. Mm -hmm. And you come back to me because I'm not coming to you. I'm not coming to you yes, for you to apologize. No, I'm a, I'm a Pisces. I'm Pisces. I'm not coming to you for you to apologize to me for something you fucked up on. And that's how a lot of people are. They want you to point out where they messed up at. No, yeah. you got to. Sometimes you got to know. If you seen that you did something, and I stopped talking to you behind what you did. You know what you, you did. know what you did. Not always. Because that's what, true, that's not, true. Cause what that's may true. have been key, key, key for us last week because of maybe something that you got going on right now that already put you in a bad space is not that's key, true. key, key. So I will say that some of the misunderstandings that I've had, most of the misunderstandings that I have with people is I just cut people off. Mm -hmm. And that's my character flaw. Because in my mind, I guess I'm guilty of, okay, you done size my shit one or two many times and mm -hmm. I'm good. And I, <laughs> and I watch people's patterns and behavior. So you like real cool with me when we at Joseph House, but you kind of act funny with me when we at Shannon mm -hmm. House and you kind of, you know, away. And so I just watch patterns and it makes me like, be like, okay, you know, I'm good on that. And I don't like to have conversations with people and that's a character flaw too. But I remember watching this movie with my aunt so many years ago and the thing, it was this movie, See No Evil, Hear No Evil or something. Somewhere in the movie it said is that if I ask you no questions, you'll tell me no lies. And that's been my experience with mm -hmm. women. Like, they know that they done been done, done something and they gotta go all the way around the world to break, to not even really apologize, but to <clears> say, <throat> you know, I'm going through this or I got this. I don't wanna hear nothing about that. Like, I wanna talk about what you did that yeah. made me feel some type of way or whatever. So, I, you know, that's a, a character flaw in itself, in a way, you know, for me. Like, I just be having these little checkout moments and be like, yeah, you know, we good on that. And mm -hmm. I can. We could be like cool, kuna matata, best buds or whatever. And I could be like, you know what? I'm done. And you don't have to worry about me again. And my motto is, I've never lost a friend. <laughs> because I feel like anybody that was worth being a friend to me, that I feel like we could establish the relationship, I've always gone to that person. And I feel like vice versa. Mm -hmm. So people that I walk away from, I don't lose no sleep or be like, dang, you know, I wish I would have done this differently because I can say at 37, about to be 38, I've never lost a friend. Right. Yeah. That's good. Now. That's good. But, you know, and even with that, the only part that I would find negative in you, how you interpret how you handle things, <laughs> is you don't conversate with the people. Because, like you said, they may not know they messed up. So we can't always expect people to have the understanding. Like, so, say everybody in that whole situation that they was towed down, drunk, screw face. And then the next day you felt some type of way because you was in your feelings under the influence. But, and you didn't realize you was in your feelings, but you done showed this person that you was in your feelings. And you done told her what you felt. And in you telling you her what you felt, you hurt her feelings. Yeah. And didn't realize it because you were express, expressing yourself. Now you done cut off. I don't think words more or less hurt, bother me. It's behavior. So I. So you like, more, it's more the behavior yeah, than the words. Yeah, okay. like words, you know, I mean, it ain't really nothing you can say to me that I can't say back. Because I got a, like a real like that's mouth, mouth, you know. <laughs> so we can go to the... But action, I ain't going to run out of action, bullets on that. But actually, <laughs> nah, let me say something. I'm going to go down there and make you think about seeing your wrist with words with me. <laughs> you know, and so yeah, that's that one thing that me yeah. and my siblings have agreed on. <laughs> We love learning not to say anything to each other out of anger. Yeah. You're like, you know what? <laughs> we'll revisit this and come back because we're going to go to the bang out. And I try not to do that with people that I regard as friends mm -hmm. or I thought were friends yeah, or whatever. Yeah, because I know they can't stand in the paint with me on words. And then I'm going to end up being the bad guy. So the words That's don't bother me. <laughs> but I just be watching behaviors. And I yeah. think I'm at a place now that I watch how people move and how they act around me and how they act when they're not around me. And it, those be my aha moments mm -hmm. for me like, okay, so that's what we're doing. And I just, I guess I'm just too old to be sitting up on the phone with women trying to hash through things. 
character flaw it may be, but I don't want to do anything that I don't do in my marriage. Right. And I'm not sitting up at night going back and forth with Jason arguing about things and so having to question his friendship. integrity or loyalty on things. And when I have to do that outside my house, that'd be like, you got it. I've never had to do that with a friend before. Yeah. I haven't either. That's why never I said I had lost one. I've never had to do that with a friend before. Oh, female, period. I've I, only, I have with I've females, with, with not my, with, with females. Yeah. It's only been in my my sisters. Me and my, it's a lot of us, so we may clash a little bit, but it ain't no clash to where, because I'm the oldest. I'm the baby. So, so that's yeah, a strike. So it's a, oh, yeah. You know, they yeah. say I'm oh, super yeah, yeah. But I don't be always be wrong either. I don't know, but you <laughs> know that, but you score. You all right. So I know as the baby, you probably be like, throwing all kind of, yeah. So me being the oldest, I'm I'm more of the, you know, calmer one. Everybody know that um she going to be way more serious. Everybody know how to act around me. We not gonna act the way I act around this sister, around this sister. Every, it's 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 a relate, it's That's a respect true. thing with me. How it is, how they will be with my mom, and then sometimes they may actually do more around my mom they than they would even you. do around me. So, um, my siblings, when, if we get into it, if I don't fuck with you, they know they don't fucked up. Like, cause mm -hmm. I don't, I don't just not, you know do that so if you're in a in a situation where we can't talk about it that's because you're not willing to accept or yeah. to take accountability because i ain't true. stepping on toes i ain't being disrespectful i'm not gonna do any of that and then for the most part i'm not even going to express what i really feel about you sometimes because again we got mouths that will hurt people yeah so um for the most part i'm always going to be the person that is very humble in the situation which is why you're going to want to come talk to me and seek refuge in me because I'm unjudgmental. I want to, if you're going to, you know, tell me what's going on with you, I'm going to make sure you're going to hear exactly what you need to hear. I ain't, I ain't trying to protect your feelings either, but I'm going to give it to you in a, a manner of respect. So we ain't going to worry about that type of stuff. So if you do something to me, if we fall out, it's your fault. That's how I feel. It's literally your fault. Yeah. And when I explain the situation to somebody else, they're going to say the same thing. Oh, she fucked up bad. And I ain't going to leave nothing out. I'm yeah. going to tell everything. Yeah. You're going to know. Yeah. <laughs> you really yeah. messed up. So, with, with that being said. <clears throat> <laughs> you having that look on your face. <laughs> with y'all aha moments. Um, you said more than likely, Joe said it too. Your aha moments are... You know what you're already doing. So 5% of the time is the only time where you're going to actually jump in there and have, like, you know what, mm -hmm. fuck you, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But 95% of the time, you're going you to chill. Rob said the same thing. Sharika did not. <laughs> Say the same thing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> I'm always verbal work in progress, people. Good. I'm not a vice versa, Sharika, vice versa. And I think it goes back to like upbringing. Like my mama is vocal, my daddy is vocal. It's not a bad. So thing. although I didn't see like them, like they went like a kuna matata or whatever. But my mm -hmm. mama go let my daddy know where he tried her at. My daddy yeah. go let my mama know where this where you tried me at. So it always seems socially acceptable to have an opinion. You know right. what I mean? And I think delivery matters too. And right. that was one of the things That's I had to work right. on That's with Jason. But it's like. I'm go even in my coffin, if y'all saying something at, that don't sit well with me, I might sit up and be like, mm. you know, like I'm a, <laughs> you said it that I'm time, a, it's just, I have to, you know, I have to say something. So I, I understand where my seven year old comes from. Sometimes when I tell him to do stuff and he going down the hallway, he saying his little stuff or whatever and it's under his breath or whatever. I, you know, I'm not saying like that the disrespect is okay, but I get that I got to get it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you whereas, know, yeah, whereas Jason is more of the Rob and the jokes is like, I'm gonna give her enough rope to hang herself, but in a minute she finna find out what she got me for the mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And then when he do it, that five percent is so rare, I'm like duck lip with my now my feelings are like, dang, dang. you that mad? Mm -hmm. But you been mad. running your mouth for an hour and fifteen minutes nonstop. What you do when you get like that? I, I pout. 
<laughs> Choose some manipulation tools. Yeah. But sometimes <laughs> I gotta still throw my weight around, you know, because I I got that one bullet left. That's it. So like I'm got the bang out, you know, hang out to the bang out, and then. But I, the I, I can understand I, that if he wouldn't, if you weren't exactly how you were with him, he wouldn't be how he is with you. you. Yep. So anything other than what you're giving him would be. A right. turn on, but if he, and I'm he not cool. saying he called me pushback, shorty, because I question everything. You right. know, so that's the biggest thing. Like he could tell me, like you know, what the people said, da da da. Why? You know, what they said, I gotta do this. Why? Like you know, I'm no who, what, where, when, and why right. person. Right. Somewhere, somewhere along that lines, it can turn into you know an argument, or it can just be an argument about our stuff. You know, because we argue or yeah. we have disagreements about things or whatever, and. Until I feel like my point is getting across. You always win the argument. It's not about winning. Right? <laughs> <laughs> raw, raw. <laughs> raw. In my mind, yes. I won. <laughs> but sometimes it's not about that. Even I tell him, it's not about the winning. Because he'd be like, I'm not wrong. And I'd be like, it's not. Some, and even sometimes I take the high road, love me, and say, it's not about who right or wrong. Like, it's about me understanding your per per uh, perception, you understanding mine. Like, we got to yeah. understand each other's love language. What makes you tick may not make me tick and right. vice versa. Right. And the problem that I'm having right now is nothing make you tick. Like, what you get mad about? Because I'm like, I'm so always... So why like, is that a problem? Because some things I just feel like he be too calm about. But you got to accept that. Yeah. He, accepts, he accepts that you tick. And he, 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 he be like, I ain't gotta get mad because you mad. Take, exactly. Yeah. See, so somebody gotta though. be the yeah. compromising yeah. person that's he mad. Yeah. Yeah. Except that he willing yeah. to be the person that's gonna take the high road because you already a tick 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 tick. But, then I, but I feel like then I end up looking like the crazy person. Well, so that's like, the thing. You don't want to look crazy alone. But see, crazy. You don't want to look crazy alone. So so we gonna hear the falsely act like he don't say it. Give me some. And the people try. At the restaurant, at the gas station, at the club, give me you some. Even like, if you don't say nothing to them, be like, hell no, nah, raw hell, let's fuck the end. Then, even if give me some. Like, like, they got to be like, yeah, they got to be like directly disrespectful. That's him. He's like, I don't care like, about that. Like, I'm gonna have zero talent for that. Like, I'm but gonna direct disrespect yeah. deserves but, zero talent. Well, like, direct disrespect like, deserves zero like, talent. We're on some like. You seen the way she was looking at me and this and this and that? I'm like, oh. That's me. Like, <laughs> yeah, like we were in Atlanta and um, the the lady came over, like the waitress or whatever, and she like, I'm like, well, what would that be about? He was like, she was tapping him like, like that. Babe, babe, the lady got the water. She was talking to some people. I told her when she was done, just come get the money from me. I said, but she, like, like you ain't going to pay her. You got money. Babe, but I told her. She was done with that. Come to me. To come get me. Don't matter what. Okay, but what come get you if, you know, like, you, that don't bother you? He like, what you, you want me to swing for the lady in the club? No, oh my God. He just lied on him. Yeah. And, and you want me to swing on him? The, in the club. Because she did that. Yeah. She did that. Yeah. Tick. And so, like, tick, tick, I'm, tick, I'm tick, learning. Tick, tick. I'm learning to come off of 10. And I'm trying to get like on five, and from five, I'm gonna work my but way down to like two use, or three. And 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 at, use his resources. He right there for you. He too calm. But you that's, gonna, that's what I'm too telling too. you. Take a little <laughs> bit of that resource of that calmness. Because he be like, somebody gonna be your ass. Who? I, I, mean, I, think, <laughs> I think that I think that women. No, he ain't even gonna let that happen. <laughs> Women tend to respond to that type. We respond because of our protective, but they're not, it's a nonchalant thing with them because they don't see that as disrespect. Yeah. It's not a, like Rob said, it's not a direct disrespect. If she came over, stepped on my shoes, and, and just stood there, and knowing she's stepping on my shoes, bitch, that's disrespect. It's a, di yeah. it's a direct line. So we, his temperament is trying to keep your temperament calm right if he on 10 and you on 10 y'all going to jail right yeah, and yeah. right and, it's and so see i think too again like it sounds like i'm deflecting but like even <laughs> in <laughs> in 
and my mom and dad separation. Like my mom just be like, ain't nobody gonna try her. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody. You know she still. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna try her. You know her boo or whatever. So it was like, okay, seeing how my parents interact with each other. Like my daddy don't have no nonsense about you know my mom and vice versa. I'm thinking, okay, this is how things like Rob was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, like if that's what you see and that's what mm -hmm. you know. Like, I'm thinking, okay, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be like, you know, on 10 about your May, and I'm always like on a thousand, but I'm learning. Okay, I was just about right. to ask. I'm yeah. learning. That's what I was just yeah. about to ask. Yeah. 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 Because at what point do you decide? I'm on 10, oh. though. Huh? I'm on 10, though. But he's on 10 about me. But here's the thing. I, what yeah. I gather from you is that you could be on 10, and I may not know it. You could be on 10 right now. And I don't know it. You know what I mean? Like, Shannon could be right sitting right here, and I could be saying some sideways shit to her. And you could be on 10, like, but she see, really don't know I'm about to the, I'm just Right, but your body, but your body language like, yeah, is yeah, like my husband. Yeah. Yeah. He, he can be just real calm on 10, and then he yeah. go. Yeah. But very nonchalant. And it's I know quiet, Shannon so. from growing up, so we very expressive. Yeah. Like, by the language, vocal, yeah, everything gonna let you know. Whereas y'all would kind of be like silent killers. You... The person just blow up and you ain't even know like they all right you that bad you know so yeah i'm learning i'm a work in progress <laughs> but the fact, but the fact, the fact you that you to go to a though i'm sure yeah because i love my husband it's just gonna control it and that's it, right. it's just about having a little bit more control over that because and the fact that you know your husband ain't going never to that 10 and to, unless it's really really necessary you don't have to get to the level of 10 that you are because my wife already on 10. So somebody got to be calling. Her 10 and my 10 going to be different. different. And, well, her 10 might be cussing you out, talking about you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. getting in your face. My well, you know, 10 may it's be. It's physical. Right. Right. So, but, 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 before, but, and that's not, but that's, but that's what, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. That's what we don't want. Yeah. We really don't ever want our man to get on 10. No, we don't. We, we really don't want no. that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a whole different level. When you with somebody who really there to protect, love, and honor you, they 10 ain't your 10. Yeah. So you really just crump. That's all you is, reason. just crump. Yeah. This finna be a whole nother level right. of 10. Right. Somebody finna get hurt. Yeah. Somebody this shit jail. didn't even have to happen. <laughs> you done took us here on 10. Now you now want me to get to 10. 10. Now I'm at now 10. Now I'm at 30. Now, now we on 10. Right. right. Look what 10 y'all. Look right. what 10 did. Right. Right. Look what 10 did. Right. 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 Now who's going to come here? That balance. Depending on whatever the situation is, it's going to gravitate who going to pop. Like, we know each other. Exactly. Exactly. I know this right here going to make her tip. You know what I'm saying? And she know, okay, this gonna this, let's say let's say the school call and it's a female teacher or a female principal or whatever talking about the child or whatever. If she say something wrong, that's gonna pop Shannon off. I could talk to that same lady. I may not hear like that right there. Yeah. Well, I might be like, excuse me what you said and, and straighten her right then and, and be done with it. Finish mm -hmm. the conversation. Like I ain't too mad now nah, we can't finish. Like I'm just stop, hey, what did you say? Okay, well we're gonna fix that and keep moving. Um but to, to energy, I do think that when the school call, they do talk to women differently Definitely. than they talk to they, me. They talk to me I feel respect. like every, I, and it's no disrespect, but I feel like in the past when the school has called me, they have talked to me like, I don't know who my child's father mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I yeah. That's how they always tell us. And, yeah. and, and it wasn't until maybe Jalen was in the fifth grade, my oldest son, and the teacher had called me a couple of times, and I said, "You know, you can call his daddy, right? Because I'm at work." She was like, "Oh, um, I can call his dad. I I have him by myself. Yeah, you, you call his daddy." We That's name Alpha. I hate that. That's Who on stay the phone. in the house with him? That's on the phone. The you know, I even had to have a checkable moment with. Um, the principal, because the principal at one of the schools, um, say their little identity, um, had a conversation with Jalen, you know, uh, and was asking him, like, you know, like, you know, where do you live and all this stuff and who live with him and all of this stuff like that. 
And I had to call the principal and like, hey, because it just came up, you know, in conversation, you know, Jada telling me like, oh, yeah, because it something happened when he went to the principal's office and while they were waiting for me to get there, the principal was having a conversation with him about these things. And the next morning, I called the principal before the principal skill shift started and let them know, like, if you want to have, if you want to get it, you know, I asked them why they were having that conversation with Jada. And the principal replied that they were trying to get to know Jalen. Let me tell you how you get to know him. What's his favorite color? Yeah, what that's food the little he likes? And all of that. I said, because what were you going to say when you was asking Jalen about his daddy? Were you mentally and emotionally prepared to be a source of support for him if he told you his daddy was dead? Hmm. So no, what y'all was like? You just want to be nosy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, so it's like... I, I get where Shannon is coming from because they do, t I feel like in my experience, when people have called me about stuff that my son has done at school, that they do talk to me in a way, not even like a baby mama, not that, like in yeah. a sense of like Jalen from some broken home yeah. and he don't know who his daddy is, yeah. you know what I mean, some fly by night type of thing. And so my conversations with them have been like rah, 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 you know, because it's the mama bear and I'm sure that's part of where Shannon coming from, like, okay, like, wait a minute, we're going to be mindful mm -hmm. of the, you know, the verbs we using to describe the situation, but it's something about when your voice come on the phone, yeah. it's like, oh, I probably break this that. shit yeah. again, That's you know what I mean, back to and it changes, I it changes but, things. But even with, shit. even with, like, have, is having the same conversation with male or female, if the female was to say it still wasn't really similar to 10, I'd get her straight, but it wasn't really similar to 10. She's not going to send you to 10. No, because she not to say. No, but the thing is, she's not going to send you to 10. She's not going to do anything to try to send you to 10. What it is is that the when voice we call, everything. when they call us, for one, it's always a, a temper with the person calling the mom. It's just like, you don't know your kid mm -hmm. type of, like the vibe you're giving is like I'm got I'm about to tell you something about your kid you don't know, and and really you are not about to do nothing. You about to tell me something that happened and how my kid responded, mm -hmm. and it may not be how you thought they should have responded, but that's still I know my kid responded that way. Mm -hmm. But it's just the way that they the delivery the, the delivery of it because I had to go to the school one day in person to have to say something directly to the principal. The principal made a a real slurish comment toward my child. And Erica very, 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 very big on disrespect with her as a kid. She she know how she's supposed to be talked to. She know how she should be addressed. She know all of that. So when you step out of bounds with her, because I don't address her like that, mm -hmm. so she know you wrong. So when you step out of bounds with her, she going to call me. And Erica get up and leave the class and call me. I ain't never told my child she wrong about it. You ain't got to wait till the end of class. If it happened right then, put me on notice. Because yeah. I might need to be there by the end of class. So if you get rolled up, I'm going to handle that. I, that's just how we got it. That's our handle it that way. So when she called, she said, Mom, Mr. Such and Such, had, I don't, he ain't nothing more than Fairview, um, said something really slurish to me. And he's and Mom, and I'm going to have to go to the principal's office. Okay, I'll meet you there. So, get to the school. He gone. I'm there he early. Gone. He gone. She went in. She got sent to the principal office, but the principal wasn't even there. Okay. So, I get there early in the morning before school open. Everybody I know is in the office. They can sign me in for the day. So, I'm there early. I'm hot. I'm hot at this moment because now I done emailed overnight. Ain't nobody responded. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody called me the next morning before 9. So I'm there. I mean, before 8. So I'm there at 8.15 in line. Nobody don't want to address me. Nobody don't go get the principal. Nobody don't say shit. You just stand there. Soon as there and walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Everybody got respect. Mr. Davis did. Mm -hmm. Nobody ain't even addressed me as Ms. Davis or nothing when I first walked in. Even though they knew who I was when I walked in, because I signed myself in sure for my that. appointment. Oh, baby, I showed out. And he's standing just there, like, waiting for somebody to say something. He, <laughs> he's he's saying that, like, like, See, no. like calming down. <laughs> he's he waiting for anybody to say anything. Because I'm walking up, I'm walking, I'm pacing now, talking shit, pacing. 
Straight up. On camera loud, everything. Y'all see this the type of shit y'all want. <laughs> type of shit. Like, you know, we got to get here you for y'all to understand where I'm coming from. So nobody don't want to address me till my husband walk in. Who is only my husband? Yeah. yeah. I'm the fucking mom. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so you guys can't address me. This is how we got to get. So levels of disrespect is different for the male. They feel like when the man walk in, oh, this is a, oh, we gonna, now we can respect the relationship. Yeah, this is a, this a whole thing. That's how we Everything respect. Everything It ain't Everything about the changed. person no more. It's about that she has a partner. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's, what, that's what, what, when I we, see. when they see that happening, the dynamic is, the whole shift in the room, everything shifts. like it's it's different. Yeah, that's crazy. Everything shifts. So now I'm mad. I may be mad because now Jason on the phone with the teacher and she's talking to him and they like, I he on the other end and you know he's sitting by me like, ha, 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 okay. <laughs> you laughing? The fuck? Because wait a minute. Because she just <laughs> had me on ten. So y'all friends now? <laughs> yeah. Like why he on the phone? So y'all. Right. Y'all friends now, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, because her delivery is changed. She all soft and cuddly and talking to him. And he's like, uh -huh. all right, no problem. I'm glad we got everything work. My friends. <laughs> the same person that tried me on the phone. You you saw the email that she had sent me and reminded me to before y'all get off the phone. You know, because I'm like, well, what? what is something that trigger you. Something. Something. Give me something. You. But again, you know, like, like what Rob said, like, what? Make men tick and yeah. women is to see something like that. Everything. I think then I cause a problem with me and Shannon because I'm like, come on, like, yeah, I'm, I must have calm down. Yeah, like, you barking at me now because I'm barking because y'all, y'all yeah. laughing because on the phone. Y'all on the phone. I'm trying to handle the situation a little better than you was handling it. Oh, see, that's oh, what the problem is. That's what oh, the problem is. Oh, that's what the problem is. 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 So what if Shannon picking up what the teacher putting down? I mean, I got you don't know that I'm because when she got on the phone with you, with her, and I'm but my experience may not be your experience. But you can't be mad for how I handled it. But you can't say I ain't handling it right either, cause now I'm on the. I know you. <laughs> that's why you can't stop. That's why right there. You that can't just why you can't. That's why you can't put this shit inside there. Right there. This why I'm for you. Yeah. Oh my God. So you don't know how to cut Thank that. Thank y'all so much <laughs> for tuning in, y'all. We got a point right. three coming up. We are gonna come back and see y'all one more time because we got accountability next. I hope everything yes. today was wonderful. Anybody got any wonderful last thoughts y'all want to get to our audience? Um, make sure y'all catch. Uh, the podcast Freedom Train Freedom Train Radio dot com. Make sure you check it out there. Um, check out Chevy's World Podcast on Instagram. Check out Freedom Train Network Instagram. Subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. All the podcast platforms. Y'all better be listening to this podcast all across the world. If not, we're gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better be watching because me and Rob been trying to make sure we don't get evicted. <laughs> right. so we don't want to be home. Stay tuned. Make sure we still got a house. I'm trying to say. <laughs> part three. Stay tuned for part three. We got to talk about accountability, y'all, because a lot of that has um, surfaced in the, the conversations today. And I think that was a strong point. We're going we gonna to see when we can push in a part three. But you can relationship, relationship, relationship. You know, it's so a lot much. to discuss. So. Rob, what's it? Uh, what you, what stood out with you for today? What you want to give to the people? Um, y'all just, <laughs> just want to be able to store some stuff. Shannon, right. let's go. Let Rob, 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 Rob get fresh. Go, go hang out with the fellas, right. and I have to be questioned. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What about you, Miss Collins? Um. I don't know. Everything was a great takeaway. I enjoy the like the conversation, the communication mm -hmm. with the guys. You know, they helping me to kind of have these teachable, teachable, these teachable moments, moments coming down off the of ten. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it was like a bull over here. I'm 
working on it. Um, but I, it's all in love. It's all, all in love. love. So, love. like, just having the conversations with the guys, kind of le- learning more about, you know, because you think you know everything about your relationship with your partner. Just kind of learning more about what my husband loves, like, what his communication is, and, you know, everything don't have to be about it. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Everything yes, on it, I'm, I'm transparent. I'm not perfect. That's what we're going to take away from the show today, yes. y'all. Everything doesn't have to be a battle. It's a relationship, not a fight. Yes, yes. it's a relationship, not a fight. But I don't be trying to fight him. I know. Just the people. I know. I know. <laughs> it's people that mess with him. People. But see, the crazy part of me don't have no problem with that, though. <laughs> and that's the problem that I got. That you got a problem and that you and Rob keep kicking with the damn teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he can't fun. store shit. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate y'all. We like you. We love you. We like you. We want to sketch y'all next week. Y'all tune in. Check us out. And we'll get back with you on a part three. Hey, Peace. It's going down. It's going down. Oh my God! I cannot with Sharika. Rob said that not with Sharika. You in the conversation. What? No. Oh, yeah. I almost I'm got out my seat on the half of the <laughs> <laughs> okay. He said what I was thinking about. Like, <laughs> Rob said, I'm just trying to get out of it.